I mean, By the way, Jack the Ripper, uh, ten out of ten name. If if oh, it, if that guy really it. came up with it for himself, outstanding job. <laughs> that guy should have had a job in marketing. Also, wait, I didn't like my shirt. I was literally just gonna comment on it. Uh, can I can I tell you what came to mind when I first saw it? Because I think I'm gonna say the same thing. Yeah, go ahead. Is your is your something from a movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it 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 was reminiscent of in the Blind Side when. Oh, I wasn't gonna say that. Oh, when they they take Michael Orr to like buy shirts, and she's like, "That's the one you like," <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> it's it's the it's the like yellow and brown rugby shirts. And when they're in like the big and tall. Yeah. He needs bigger and taller. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's just not something you it's it's not your normal no it's not welcome back to the macro dose podcast um <laughs> that's how we start the show baby if you uh if you check it on youtube you can see my beautiful shirt big t hating on it you know i'm not hating i i don't think it's a bad look it's just what popped this, into my mind this is the thing. i don't ever wear anything close to fashionably right this is um i believe lrg and i think they sent me like a bunch of shirts like I don't know, seven, eight years ago, bro. And it's been, I, this is the first time I've ever worn this shirt. Uh, today, I just figured I'd go something other than black and white, you know? You've kept a shirt for eight years that you've never worn? Yeah. How many of those do you have? Oh, a bunch. Do you know that box of Nike shit that we talked about the other week? Yeah. Still have not even looked through it. Still in the plastic. Well, yeah, but that's from a week ago. No, I, that was like two, three weeks ago. It's still in a box. I, I at least should hang it up. I'm horrible. Like, clothes? I'm horrible with like I was talking to this one shorty who's a, who's a fashion stylist. We got a plan. I'm finna start finna start wearing clothes, man. Like Okay. Yeah, like real, like grown up clothes where I look, you know what I'm saying? What about shoes? You don't like wearing shoes. Ah oh, fuck. I gotta do all that shit too, huh? Yeah, um, that's part of it, yeah. It is part of it. I'm a, uh I found this dude. Yo, peep this shit out, bro. I found this dude, and y'all could I'm gonna I'm show you the um I don't know his name though. Cause she was like, all right, this is what you got to do is clip some people that you like or that you think is fashionable. And then we'll work from there. Cause I know like stylistically what, what is appealing to your eye. And I found this dude who did like the coldest shit ever, man. Um, he was joking and somebody, somebody, I think he made a TikTok about it and that's how I found it. But somebody put it on Twitter. Um, I got to find him, man. I'm going to find him. But he, somebody said, dress for the world. Oh, wisdom. Yes, that's a dude's name. You yeah. know him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like extremely yeah. famous. Oh, my. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I don't know shit about him. He's but, the so coolest they said, dresser ever. Dog. So, like, he did uh, a comic, show Big T his, his, yeah. his, his, his shit. Yeah, I'm not familiar with wisdom. So, and then, and then put it on YouTube if you can, Mac, because yeah. people need to see this. They, so, like, when people, like are out and about and and like they're dressing. What I see is like, okay, I see that you're doing something. It's not appealing to me, but I'm sure that people that enjoy fashion think that shit is dope, right? But when I saw him, I was like, hey, yo, this is what it is. Like that is fashion and expression, and I get it. That makes sense to me. So what he did was like he 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 dressed for each country for the Olympics, mm -hmm. and dog, he fought. Uh, it's. It's fantastic. Like his Japan fit, his Canadian fit, his America fit. He had a Palestine fit. He had a Brazil fit. Bro, that shit is that shit is crazy dope. Even the crazy way dope. I could see you, like even the way that he dresses in a normal day to day, which is still very elevated compared to like someone just normal. Like I could see you dressing the way he dresses on a day to day. Not not the crazy like let me dress like hungry for the Olympics, but like. He has just like cool, really cool pieces, and you have no, money. He's, he has it. He has the 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 magic eye for that shit. I don't. The, the The problem I run into with fashion, like look at this, is you have to care. Like you have to care what you put on. Like it matters, right? And my thing is like I don't. I couldn't care less what I wear. It just does. I, I dress for comfort, and so that's. I'm gonna have to start caring to a certain extent. You know what I mean? I think you could like, look at look at the picture I just sent you. I think you could dress like that. But the problem is, I don't have an eye for that, right? So it's get a stylist. But then I'd have to like care. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> exactly. No, but the whole thing is you pay them to care. And they just dress me. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't care, you can't pay somebody. Like, then you care. Well, Paying somebody is caring. Well, it sounds like you care a little bit. No, no, I, 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 I don't care at all, but I think it, it looks intriguing. When I saw him, I was like, that looks fun. Like, he makes, to me, he makes dressing look fun. Whereas, to me, I don't, I've never even attempted to have fun uh, dressing. How many, you know? like, articles of clothing do you have right now that would be, like, in that realm maybe 20 to 30 pieces oh, okay because I, more than I, I had thought. i have like um shit in my closet where i used to wear like i have i have like six pairs of shoes i wore when i was in the league that i bought that i haven't touched since then i because i used to like everybody dressed in louis vuitton and shit so i thought i had to do that right um just young and impressionable and so i have like probably three pairs of louis vuitton shoes that are like brand new that I just never What's wear. the most expensive thing you bought that you like didn't care about at all? Clothing. Um probably like a coat. And it's not that much, but like fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. I mean that's with relative, that's a lot of yeah. money, don't get me wrong. But like uh, like these fashion people that be spending all this money on this shit, they I mean it's way more than way more than that. Yeah. But yeah, shout out to Wisdom, man. Check his stuff out if you like dressing. If you don't like dressing, check it out because it 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 moved me. And I guess that's what art is supposed to do, right? It moved me. But anyway, welcome back, man. Um, PFT is out today. What is he doing? He's at camp. Yeah, what is that? What is camp? What is this? They did like a. They went to a summer camp in Wisconsin for a few days. I didn't go because I couldn't really do anything with my arm, so I'm still here. But. Barstool is the most like childish adult thing I've ever seen. Like y'all, y'all's office is insane. Yeah. But you know, shout out to camp, man. I guess. Yeah. So everyone's at camp. You love the sim when you come here. Oh, that's, I would stay there. I would live in there. I do when I when I go there. I was I, I sit in the golf simulator. And then uh, we should also say we're in uh, another studio because we had an hour's worth of. Uh, <laughs> there was an echo that we couldn't figure out where it was coming from, so we had to come in here. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So this is the new studio. I don't know whose studio it is. I guess it's like the it's like the, the extra studio. One. Yeah, got you. All right. Well, anywho, that's the. Uh, I I'm excited about today's um, topic because I didn't know it's, it's on Jack the Ripper. Probably see from the title, and so I had no idea. I I've heard of the name before, but it just never looked. It just never intrigued me. Never intrigued me. And so upon doing like some research about this topic it's like you know it's, it's like one of the first murder mysteries there ever was honestly that captivated the, the globe really um and I, we're gonna we're gonna dive deep into it man but um first we gotta in macrodosing style go over like what's going on how's everybody feeling current events current news big t's list what's popping you know you've been watching dnc no i haven't watched the leg of it man um we alluded to it a little bit before the show started. He <laughs> said that Common did a verse about Kamala. Yeah, he wrote a um, song about Kamala. It was not good. Oh, man. Look, bro. This is why I just hate where we're at with our politics right now. It's, it's like we're trying to one-up each other. Now it's like, <laughs> who could throw the best concert? That's what it feels like from, <laughs> from, from a patron. But I did see Lil John <laughs> go down the stairs. Yeah. What are we doing, man? This has nothing to do with nothing. But I, I guess they try to like garner like votes. Yeah. Well, it's for like the roll call. Like every state has to like say who they're going to endorse for their candidate. Yeah. I guess they all try to do something. Like I saw Wisconsin, they were all wearing the Packers yeah. cheese heads. Yeah. Vermont right. was doing a Noah Khan song. Like, oh, really? Yeah. So I think each one did something different. I didn't watch. I wanted to see what Ohio's was. When but, you like, say each state has to say, like, what does that mean? So, like, Texas has to, like, the delegates of Texas have to nominate Kamala, basically. Like, we want our oh, person yeah, yeah, to be Kamala. Yeah, yeah. They go around Gosh. and, like, in the event that there was ever a convention where you hadn't decided who the nominee was yet, that's, like, the official vote tally. Yeah. Like but we, obviously, every time, it's just a, it's a formality. Yeah. Like, we have 432 delegates. They will be nominating Kamala Harris. I saw California's delegates didn't they like abstained. They didn't vote for her. 
No, I saw that they did. I don't know. I, I saw some about they, they didn't. Kamala's home state of California passes on assigning delegates to her. So who do they assign delegates to? Oh, uh, wait. It, it's tradition for the nominee's home states to pass initially and then cast the, quote, deciding vote for their nominee at yeah, the end of the I roll saw, call. I saw there was a video that they posted of her when California casted their delegates. Got it. For her. But yeah. A uh, butte, a butte. Yeah, no, I, I didn't, I didn't watch any, any of it. It's, uh, it's a show to me. Um, like I, I mean, I didn't watch any of the RNC either. I just think it's getting to a point where we are the entertainment capital of the world, and our news is infused with entertainment, politics is infused with entertainment, and it's literally how people are coaxing people for votes. And so, like, I'm a policy driven voter, like, um. And so it would be lovely if, and of course this is like, you know, a little grandiose of me, but I feel like that's how we should as human beings cast votes. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just a big show to me. And they're trying to like one up each other with entertainers. Um, but the issue with that is the GOP is always going to lose that battle. Cause I, I think there's a lot more, the left probably drives culture more than the right. That's always been the case, and so I don't I don't know why they would enter into that game. But they uh they kicked James Taylor out the other day. They went too long. Did you see that? Who, who, I don't know who James Taylor is. He's a singer. I don't even know what kind of music he is. Honestly, he's an older white older guy. Singer. And they he was supposed to perform, and they went till like Midnight. one a.m. Eastern. Who's so late? And so they this is the DNC. Yeah, this both I mean both of them do this where they go from like eight to midnight, but I don't know why. Yeah, and this one's in Central Time, so on the East Coast it's going even later. But they, uh, yeah, they booted him and they sent Biden out there at midnight to give his speech. He was at that. He was up at midnight. Probably close. He was the last guy on Monday, I think. Oh shit! How did he do? Like just cognitively, because on <laughs> on the Biden scale, he did fine. There was one part where he, you know, was Biden, but other than that, it was mostly fine. That's impressive, though. For was almost 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. He still has his, you know, yeah. little mouse on the wheel running. That's pretty impressive, bro. What is it, sundowning? When, when like, people that are older, once it starts to get into the evening, their cognitive functions start to go away? I've never heard that term, but they've said that about him. They're like, he from 11 to 3, he's good to go. <laughs> I, I honestly, I texted, I texted Jack Mack. Um, I kind of forgot he was still the president. When they sent him out there, I was like, wow, he really, he's the president right now. I was like, it's, it's a miracle if nothing bad happens in the next four or five months. Like what? I, I mean, we're, we're a rudderless ship. I would rather have it like that. I don't want to know every move. I don't need to know every single, I don't need to see you. I don't yeah, but you, you want somebody hand. who's, who's with it in charge. Um, Yeah. I don't disagree. Yeah, with that. <laughs> that, yeah like yeah. they sent him out there. I was like, I I completely forgot that he's the president. Yeah, and I mean, Joe Biden was never my pick, but uh, I mean, I don't I don't know, man. And it was um, very, it was so perfect that like Nancy Pelosi stages a coup, get, gets him out, and then they're all chanting, <laughs> "We love you, Joe," with the the signs that say "We love Joe" and all that. It was so stupid she, show, she showed up to uh, the the funeral of a man she yeah killed, huh? yes Sh <laughs> to make sure he was dead i followed this dude i think i may have said this before but i followed this dude and he's fascinating he just copies everything that nancy does uh investment wise and he's up like 300 grand right now yeah i think we've talked about <laughs> it there's an app that you can set to that will do that but the problem is they don't have to disclose their trades for like 60 or 90 days or something so mm, you don't okay. always get everything like as good as they get it, but there's, that, but you can do that. Yeah. That, that's, that's, it's fascinating, but he always like posts updates and he's like, he keeps, it keeps growing. I'm, I'm sure. Follow suit, man. <laughs> Shit, it's hilarious, dog. Um, I saw that Obama, Obama made an appearance um, and Michelle Obama. I saw that just came across my timeline. I saw one thing, which again, bro, like, I just don't, I just don't, just going back and forth with these insults to me is just so whack, but it's like the left feels like they have to like respond to Donald Trump's nonsense. And so I mean, oh, I Obama said Trump had a small dick. 
Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like going back and forth with the insults. It's just it's, it's not going. <laughs> no, man. It just riles people up, and I don't. I'm not a fan of it. Like I don't. Like, but I understand their mindset. It's like we have to show strength and yada yeah. I I mean I get it to a certain extent, but this is not my cup of tea, man. I think the go. the polls are going to keep going back and forth for you know the next three months, but it seems like the polls have shifted it pretty heavily in Trump's favor this week. He's, yeah, they're going to keep going back and forth. Yeah. Um, and so th th there's a dude. Um, find me the dude because he said he was going to make his prediction after the DNC, but he's rightly predicted every single president for the last, like, I don't know, like 20, 20, 30 I've years. I've seen or that guy, like that. yeah. Um, what is his name? I, I, find that name? I don't know his name, but I have saw him the other day. He said he was leaning towards Kamala, um, but he said he he wants to wait till after the DNC and he'll make a, an official prediction. Um, Alan Licht Lichtman. Alan Lichtman. There you go. It, has he has he made his prediction yet? Um, I assume he'll wait till after her speech, which is tomorrow slash today, as people are listening. I don't think he's done it yet, but <laughs> uh, I have some breaking news that's just crossed my desk. I just saw that too. Let us, let us um, you remember the flag football quarterback we discussed the other day? Yeah, what happened? Uh, Doucette, Daryl Doucette. Um, he apparently went on TMZ last night and said, quote, at the end of the day, I feel like I'm better than Patrick Mahomes because of my IQ of the game. <laughs> I, I'm surely that's out of context. I, I, you, let, let's surely listen to it because I haven't I haven't listened to it. Surely that has to be out of context. There's not a human being that delusional on this earth. Here, hang on. I let's, wish I was that delusional. Let's listen. Crazy. At the end of the day, I feel like I'm better than Patrick Mahomes because of my IQ of the game. I know he's right now the best in the league. I know he's more accurate. I know he has all these intangibles. But when it comes to flag football, I feel like I know more than him. Okay, so oh, it yes. sounds like he's saying for flag football. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but you're still not. I, yeah, I think I think you should feel that way, but like, like so, all I can do is try to walk in somebody else's shoes, you know, and and see it through their eyes. So like, I can relate to a certain extent when I was on the practice squad that year. Chris Johnson, who played for the Tennessee Titans rush for 2000 yards and I'm on a practice squad. I'm not on an active roster. I'm watching him and I'm saying I'm a better running back than he is. And if I said that out loud, people would be like that. You're a fucking, you're crazy. What are you talking about? He just had 2000 yards, but in my mind, you couldn't tell me no different. And so I respect that mindset. I've been through that mindset and that, and that mindset can lead you to a lot of opportunities and drive and work ethic. And so I respect that mindset. Um, but I was also very realistic about where I was at. So I don't know if he is. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes may be the greatest quarterback of all time. And for you to say that you're better than him in flag football, which is basically just seven on seven. And I would argue that quarterbacks do seven on seven drills more than they play actual football. Where he can just pick people apart. <laughs> yeah, and there's no threat of a physical contact. Yeah, you may be suffering from a bit of delusion, my guy. And that's cool. Like I said. That mindset has brought people a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fortune, a lot of, a lot of success. But I think that mindset can also be a downfall. It's uh He's living up his 15 minutes and that's fine. Like more power to you. Go on TMZ, say you're the best. That's I fine. I detest TMZ. So for him to scrub the bottom of the barrel of journalism is, uh, <laughs> says a little something about him though. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, for whatever reason, they have always had it out for me, dog. What did they Fuck do them, again man. that made you hate them? So initially, I had some baby mama drama where, can't clip this, but uh, she had lied on me and said I did something I didn't do. And she went to all the local news stations in Houston and spread the lie. Then she went to TMC and spread the lie. And then we caught her in the lie. And then she started to change the story. Um, but TMZ picked it up and ever since they picked it up, 
they started doing like hit pieces on me, like randomly. They would just like random articles that would be, they would talk shit about me. Random articles, random articles. And it was just like, I don't know, it just got gross after a while to where it's like one of the dudes that was a brother there that reached out and we're good friends now. He's like, he said, man, my bad. He said, he's like, I saw all the stuff going on. He's like, and I didn't really know you. He said, but when I got to know you, he's like, your name will never be misrepresented as long as I'm here anymore. And I appreciated that. Well, they ended up firing him. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunate wait yeah. i've never seen so i went to tmz and i searched your name i've never seen this uh security camera catches amazing game of thrones reaction from arian foster oh we've seen that it, yeah i've never yeah, seen yeah, which, that i think yeah, which, said, which we had it in the sounds, podcast once sounds like a good article but i think they were just talking about i mean i don't even know i, I, I didn't read it but i i got i got a lot of flack for that because they said i was spoiling it but uh, it, it's a fire it's a fire clip because when funny. at the end, when Arya killed an ice, an ice king, uh, we was all watching as a fam, and we all we was all hyped standing up on the couch. And my, my thing, I had a I had a dog at the time. He he even was like, "What the fuck's going on?" That is really dope, though, man. Um, yep, fuck TMZ for life. Mm -hmm. But uh, wait, you had a thing with Baker Mayfield? I didn't know any of this. No, again, they just. What you have pieces. with Baker just, Mayfield? Drama, bro. It's drama. So he had like danced. You know how he like danced. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So he like did this like little goofy ass dance, and um, and uh, the Cleveland Browns said your your QB could never, and I just put would never <laughs> on, on top of it, and then you were playing at like, that time, right? No, I was no, retired. This was twenty nineteen, and so and he goes, he tweets me, he's like. I used to have a lot of respect for you, and yeah, blah, 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 blah. I was like, "Bro, shut up." <laughs> That's so insane. That's yeah, funny. Yeah, respect you. Know? Like, so but we've never dramatic. talked. It was just jokes, but whatever. Um, but that's why I don't like TMZ. TMZ is a shit stirring, like they just stirred a pot of our culture, and I det I detest that kind of like journalism. It's it's not about anything other than to garner clicks and i just don't like that kind of journalism it's it's i think it's the the bane of our society it's disgusting yeah so fuck him remember when we had him on the show I, I don't think i was on that episode the who? guy who runs tmz harvey whatever oh yeah 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 that was early that was like that was like first episode. one of my yeah, first yeah, episodes early. on the show i feel like i vaguely remember that happening but i don't recall that yeah, yeah harvey, I, I wanted to face. get into it with him but you can tell he don't Levin. i don't think he really knew who i was and and i, I didn't want to that was before like if we was to talk to him now i'll probably get in his ass but but <laughs> I, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I just I just kept it cordial, but I was like, I, don't, I remember saying something like, I don't really, I'm not really a fan of y'all like that. Because I think we were talking about like aliens, like or like yep. UFOs. Like it wasn't yeah. anything about like actually TMZ. It was about yeah. like they were coming out with like an alien yeah. documentary or something. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, yep, yep, yep. that was very yep, early that. in the tenure of this. Podcast. That was that was Babyface Big T. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can't go back and watch it. <laughs> yeah, I was not here for that. Yo, you look funny as shit though. I don't like it. <laughs> so, mean. Said, wow. so hold on. So is it this? It didn't just start growing that you were shaving it. So it would, I, it would take me like two or three weeks to grow like a little bit of anything, but then it would be so itchy and like in that, that phase where it just, it's bad. And so I never let it get past that. And then finally, once I was like, I'm just going to see what it, I, I think I just like accidentally went a little too long without shaving. I was like, I'm just going to see what it looks like. And then yeah. now I'll and never, welcome, I'll never shave yeah. it. Welcome to manhood. That's Ever. <laughs> I don't like I, that. It's I, a different color than my hair, but it is what it is. That's kind of crazy that that happens to you guys. That is kind of wild dog. That is wild. I don't, I, that don't happen to us. All of us. I mean, <laughs> that was not a racial. I, I just meant like, I met all of us. I didn't. Yeah. Us, us whites. <laughs> nah. I mean, cause I'm sure there's some, there's some brothers out there who, you know, or if, the drapes. I feel like some guys have their beards are super gray and their hair isn't gray or like well, vice that's versa. different. That's, a, that's but age, like that's yeah, kind that's of age. but like my shit is starting. I don't know if you see it. My yeah. shit is starting. I'm starting to get like little yeah. patchy salt. I can't wait till it all comes in. Ooh, that salt and pepper look. I'm gonna, so I thought I got some older ladies <laughs> back then. In the back. Yeah, that's, that's salt and pepper, dog. <laughs> salt and pepper, man. Yeah. <laughs> 
Let's take a quick break to talk about Bespoke Post. Guys, your summer just got a hell of a lot more awesome thanks to Bespoke Post. Whether you want to drink and eat more awesome, dress and travel more awesome, or explore more awesome, Box of Awesome has you covered. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. We got one recently. It was like a cool watch holder. I don't have a watch. I need to get a watch. But uh, once you have a watch, they send a sick uh, display case for it. It's free to join, and they release new items every month across a ton of different categories. When you become a member, you'll have access to stellar discounts across a plethora of products. We're talking 30% off or more sometimes. Plus, with each box of awesome, you're supporting small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small up-and-coming brand. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Get a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code DOSE at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code D-O-S-E, for a mystery gift with your first monthly shipment, boxofawesome.com, code DOSE. What's on your list, man? Talk to me about the current events that you've got up. Did you see uh, Delaware State yesterday? I did not. So they are playing Hawaii in week zero, a game that I don't know why it was scheduled. Um, but they are flying, I think it's about 5,000 miles to go play God, Hawaii. And they were flying commercial, I guess, because Delaware State, t small program, doesn't have a ton of money. to. I can't imagine what it would cost to charter a flight for a football team from De New York. They were flying out of JFK to Hawaii. And they missed their plane. Uh, uh, they, they had a, bu wait, what? they had a bus issue and they missed their flight. So the last I heard, they were trying to split the team up on different flights to get them all to Hawaii. Like hopefully yeah. I think today, I thought that was charter planes. Well, like, NCAA. well, you, like UT, obviously. Yeah. Like SEC schools and stuff like that. But Delaware state doesn't have the money for that. I didn't. So they just. So they were getting on a commercial flight and they missed it. I didn't know that they did commercial flights. Damn. I mean, look at this guy. That's too bad, dog. Yeah, so they're, uh, let me see if there's any update on that. What happens if they don't make it? Like, is it a forfeit? I don't know. No, nah, because usually when you fly that long, you're staying for like two, three days to acclimate to the time zone changes, uh, things of that nature. Right, like I guess if they were flying out yesterday, then that's like a Tuesday for... A Saturday. I'm assuming yeah. it's a Saturday think, game. Usually, when smaller schools play bigger schools, but well, Hawaii is not that big of a school. But usually, they get paid for that, right? But like, so say Delaware State's getting 500 grand, they're spending all that to go out there, probably more. Yeah, and if you miss your flight, that's <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how that works. I'd be very curious actually to find out like what happens. Like, yeah, damn. I remember when I was, I think I said, told a story for when I was coming out uh, and, and being recruited. Um, like you take visits, right? So you take your, your official visit and Hawaii offered me a scholarship and I had no interest in going to Hawaii, but I had interest in going to Hawaii, right? <laughs> and I just wanted to take the trip, but they gauge your interest and they, they rescinded their scholarship which they realized I wasn't interested because I was just going to go there for the trip. And so they try to, they try to minimize that. I don't know if they do it anymore, but like they used to like minimize that. They knew you were not serious. I so think I heard they might not even let you do an official visit unless you're committed. Now they might have changed that. Yeah, I mean, I makes sense. It makes sense because like it's a, it's a paradise. It's a vacation. You mean know, I can stay here for three days and just kick it on y'all? Shit, <laughs> why not? But like to, you, you got to be because to take an unofficial visit to Hawaii, that's going to cost you twenty five hundred dollars. And I couldn't do an unofficial visit. Why? Yeah, I know. So you've got to if you've got to commit sight unseen. I guess you could do that, go there, and then if you really hated it, decommit. But or transfer. Ooh, the transfer port like taxing their ass. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. Best best original flag of all time. Is that the difference between official and unofficial? Official is yeah, the school pays for it, and you can only do is it five of those. Yeah, it was, it was five when I was, I don't know what it is. Yeah, now. so you can only do five of those. And then every, you can go to a school as many times as you want, as long as you pay for it. Yeah. Now. How how has NL, NIL, NIL changed the landscape of recruiting from that perspective? Is is they Do they still only count? Like you can only. I think it's still supposed to be that way, yeah. 
but like i mean you know they still pretend you can't pay for things and yeah like shit. schools like, have always you know you go on an unofficial visit and like you're supposed to pay for your own meals and whatever and like the coaches will pay for dinner or something like that happens all yeah. the time but mm -hmm. um yeah i think it's still supposed to be that way because yeah. the nil like you don't get that until you're there so that was a good that was a good time man that was a good time being recruited it makes you feel wanted especially as a kid it makes you feel important it makes you feel like people value me did they do the shit they do now when you were being recruited where like you get to your hotel and they have all the candy on the bed and shit <laughs> um no nah, i didn't have that because kids post mm -hmm. videos now and it's like they walk into their hotel room and like the bed is covered in all their favorite stuff there's gummy worms and chips and all oh, you sorts know what? of stuff maybe you know what? yeah there's like a, think... a cookie cake that says like welcome to knoxville and yeah 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 um i don't think it was as extra extravagant but yeah they had like some of your favorite stuff in it, and then i'm thinking about it and especially from, from the hotel welcome arian foster future Oregon Duck, Future Ball. Yeah. So where'd you that. do your official visits? Official visits, I did Oregon, Oregon State, Tennessee, and North Carolina. You did. And do I had one scheduled for West Virginia, but I, I I committed to UT. I bet Oregon was sick. I was just gonna say that one kind of sick. Oregon was Oregon was crazy. Like I I looking back, I had a better official visit at Oregon than I did at Tennessee like with the facilities and the coaches and stuff. But when it came to like vibing with the players, I had a better visit at Tennessee. It shit felt like family. And I was correct in that assumption. Um, I mean, granted, I didn't spend college with the cats over at Oregon, but I got brothers for life from, from the University of Tennessee. It was a very family oriented uh, place. So it was fun, man. It's who was it. who was at Oregon when you were there? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Um, Did they have anybody shit. good? Uh, they had a dude that was a running back, Jonathan Stewart. Yeah, first round running back. Yep. Yeah, so they had Jonathan Stewart, Jeremiah Johnson. I know he came to you. I'm sorry, uh, Houston with me, um, undrafted. Um, man, they had a few cats. Were they good? Grace, Grace, yeah. something Grace, like DN or something Grace. Yeah, they, they were good. That was were, Dennis Dixon, who was like the original Oregon, like super cool quarterback, like. Dennis Dixon, yep, yep. Um, I can't, I can't remember. Oh, uh, there was a receipt. Ka Calvin, Co Calvin Coolidge, Calvin. Isn't that Coolidge, a president? Maybe. Cameron Colvin. Uh, Cameron Colvin. There you go. I knew it's not a receipt. Calvin Coolidge, yeah. president of the eighteen hundreds. Thirtieth president of the United States. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, wait. Yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew it was like a, a, a double C. I, He's I, a I dual remember that. Um, Played college football <laughs> president. There have been I remember, several of those. I, I'm, I'm, I remember I was in love with the um, the uniforms, yeah. and that was a big difference. Was N Nike was the sponsor for Oregon, and Adidas was the sponsor for Tennessee, and the technology between the two for the uniforms were night and day. So like Adidas had pants when you and I and I felt all the materials when you when when you sweat in it, it like soaked it in and it got everything heavier um nike had that dry fit technology where it, it literally the water would like roll off and of course it would soak in a little bit but for the most part it would keep it dry and light and that was a huge difference and the quality of the materials and all of that and like as a as a kid like i said i, I went off of fields rather than like logic i should have logically i should have went to oregon but it all worked out man but like if you were was jonathan stewart your recruiting class or was he already there he was he was the one right after me Oh, okay. And so the the big the biggest difference was this too was Tennessee is used to getting like these big time recruits right, and the only reason why Tennessee knew about me was because of Randy Sanders. He was the offensive coordinator. He he was down in San Diego recruiting, uh, I think something Kovalchuk, a quarterback from out there, and we played them in a the playoff game, and I got off. I was like I went for like two hundred yards, and Randy was like, "Yo, we need you." But even then, thinking back, he was like. Hey man, we 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 could really use it. It was that vibe. Oregon, like I didn't talk to Phil Fulmer until I signed. Like I didn't, I, we didn't, he just didn't really speak to me. Oregon, John Bunting was the head coach. They wanted me like crazy. They're like, listen, bro, like we'll roll out the red carpet for you. He said you're gonna play your your, your, your true freshman year. And granted, they sell you a lot of dreams, but I think like my high school highlight tape is kind of crazy. It was just I didn't get a lot of. Um, you kind of get drowned out when you're in a heavy 
talented area. Southern California had a lot of talent. And so like even Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll, who was the coach at USC, uh, he came up to me during when we were playing the Seahawks. He came to me playing the Seahawks one, one year, uh, right before the game. And he goes, how the hell did we miss you in, 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 in San Diego, man? You was in our back area. How did we fuck that up? I was like, I don't know. Man, I fuck around with a win, too. So, like, I, that was really cool by him, uh, honestly. But it, you just get drowned out with a lot, of, a lot of the talent, man. You just get drowned out. But yeah, You would have gone to USC? Game. Maybe. I was obsessed with what they had going on. Like I, you know, I was like I said, I was in San Diego. They was in L.A. Reggie Bush had was just there, right? But like and that's what I was saying. Like Bush and White, like you might not have you played. Understand, bro? As an athletic, as a as a as a as an athlete who played at a high level, my mindset was I was better than Reggie Bush in my head, right? In my head, I was better than Reggie Bush. I was better than Lindell White. I was better than Adrian Peterson. That in my head, and so. I mean, I think there's a good argument to be made that I had a, a, like a great pro career. And if I don't get injured, you know, I, I would be in the Hall of Fame. But you, you have to think like that. That's why I'm not too mad at, at Buddy, the flag football guy. I understand that mindset because in order for that to be reality, you have to believe it before anybody else believes it. And every athlete feels like that. And, and expressing that is like, oh, you're, you're, you're delusional. But like, you have you have to you have to bully your dreams. You can't just think, oh, you know, I'm 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 probably good enough to be like a backup. Nobody wants to be a backup, except for backup quarterbacks. They like living their best life, but like nobody attempts to 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 dream to be a backup. Nobody attempts to dream to be third best, fourth best, sixth best. And so when I'm coming out, I went to high school in San Diego. I see Reggie Bush. I know Reggie Bush. I know his game. I feel like I'm better. That's just how I felt. I know what I can do and I know what he could do. And so, like Linda White, same, same fight. Anybody, any that's just how I felt. And then you know, I get to the NFL, have that same vibe. And I had multiple seasons where I was the most productive back in, in the world. Yeah. Sorry, Noah Lyles. I uh <laughs> I think Caleb Williams was talking about because he went to Oklahoma and was behind Spencer Rattler. And they asked him, why'd you go to Oklahoma? He said, I expected to beat him out, which yeah. he didn't initially. And then Spencer Rowler sucked against Texas and they put him in and he was unbelievable. Yeah, man. There's something to be said about that mindset, but also it's to me, I mean, it can be viewed as like arrogant. I understand that my, that, that view, but it's also like, if you, if you approach it the right way, it's, it's, it's very humble. Cause it's saying, I, right, if you approach it the right way, in my opinion, it's like, I think, I see his potential. I see his his ceiling. And if I work my ass off, I know my ceiling can be higher than that. Right? If you're honest with yourself. And the greatest athletes have that mindset. And I think that's how it's supposed to be. And that that's also how you breed confidence too. Um a lot of cats, I think when they and this goes for just life in general, if I was gonna listen to some advice from me, people um, when you like make mistakes and you feel like there's an authority hovering over you, uh, it chips away at your confidence and it absolutely m minimizes and diminishes your skill set and your attributes. So they always, you always hear this, like, don't be afraid to fail, like fail a hundred percent, fail at a hundred percent rather than being timid of, of making mistakes go all out and then you can correct your mistakes and then that shit breeds confidence after a while they'll adapt to you that's that's how i saw it like i will do what i can do at 100 percent, and then the rules will bend for me football coaches Forget. love saying that if you're gonna make a mistake make it at 100 percent, and i won't get mad at you it's true though bro it's true because you'll see guys this is the telltale sign of somebody whose coach is in their head they'll fuck up on the field and they'll turn directly to the sideline coaches in their head and they're they're struggling mentally what 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 you'll see it in college more than the pros but the pros you'll see it too they'll fuck up and they'll look directly at the because the coach is like what the fuck are you doing they, they, all the time right so they'll fuck up and they'll look directly at the sideline keep looking at the sideline whereas you see ballers like i'll fuck up or i don't play no more but like when i would fuck up or you see anybody out there right now who who has the game all pro game comes to them they don't give a fuck what the coaches think i know i fucked up i'll i'll, I'll correct it 
It is what it is. They're not worried about what the coach is thinking, saying, looking, telling, or even if the coach says something to him, he'll say something back. Like, but fuck up. I got this. That's confidence. And those athletes and those confident athletes are the ones that push the game forward. Um, Lindale Forget White, it. by the way, all time underrated you? college running back. Who? Lindale White. Yeah. I, so I was on him and um CJ2K's podcast. And uh Man, shout out to him. He's 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 a really good dude. Uh, he 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 had a heart attack recently. Really? Um, it was pretty recent. It was probably like two three years ago. Um, I didn't know that, but yeah, take take care of yourselves out there, man. But I always said this. I thought Linda White was a better running back, an actual running back, than Reggie Bush was in college. The issue was Reggie was more explosive, but I only think Reggie was explosive in in like. He, he's he's a more explosive back, but I thought Lendo White was. I think he had, I thought he had better vision. I thought he had better instincts as a running back, but I don't think Lendo White took his nutrition very seriously in college. And I can say that because I didn't either. I didn't. I didn't really understand or give a fuck about nutrition until I got to the NFL, and my game was exponentially better. So I think if Lendo White takes his nutrition seriously and his training seriously, he has a 10, 12 year career, and he's. He's up there as a perennial with the, as a perennial pro bowler. In 04 and 05, he had 2,400 yards and 39 touchdowns. I'm telling you, his instincts were crazy, dog. I just think, like, if you look at his body, his body was, um, he didn't take care of it, like, nutritional wise. Uh, the game has, has obviously changed. And now nutrition is a huge part of collegiate athletics, high school athletics. Whereas when we was coming up, it, some people knew about it, some people didn't. Like I said, I didn't really pay attention until I got to the league. And then I saw what it did for me. If he, I think if he does, we're talking about Linda White as like one of those guys in, in the class of CJ, you know, Warriors Jones, Drew, those kind of cats that, that was in the league. Ray Rice, all them guys, man. Him and Chris but, Johnson were awesome. That was fun. It was Smash fun and to watch, bash. Man. It was inspiring. Yeah, shit was inspiring, man. Um uh, I've got I've got some more stories for you. Fellas. You can have better sex with Blue Chew. Blue Chew is the original brand with chewable versions of Sildenafil, Tadalafil, and Vardenafil. Those erection-enhancing ingredients help men achieve stronger, harder, and longer-lasting erections for sexual activities. With Blue Chew, say goodbye to performance anxiety and hello to longer-lasting erections. These chewable tablets have the same active ingredients you'll find in Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. But in a chewable form and at a fraction of the cost, Blue Chew is all about having confidence when it comes time to perform and having happy and healthy relationships. Blue Chew subscriptions include a free online consultation, 24-7 medical support, a prescription if approved, and delivery straight to your door every month. Chew it and do it. Use code MACRO for your first month free. First month free with code MACRO at BlueChew.com. Check them out. Thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the pod. So Talk there, to me. there's a TikTok going viral that made me uh, redneck mad. And it is <laughs> it is a woman. That's different, that's different, that's different than, re than regular mad? Redneck mad is you're, you're upset. Is that also different from okay. teed off? Yeah, teed off is mostly minor inconveniences, um, but that can arise to the level you can be redneck mad about a teed off, but teed off generally mm -hmm. is is a lower. It's a square rectangle thing. Yeah. Um. So this woman was at a movie theater and she said, "Remember, like in the good old days when you could just show up to the theater and you didn't have to have an assigned seat. Like these assigned seats are bullshit. I hate it. I would argue that's one of the greatest technological advancements we've ever made. Three thousand percent. Is first of all." They're assigned because most of the theaters now have recliners, which is awesome. And mm -hmm. you now know, if you look on there and you're like, oh, this movie at 730 is pretty full. I don't want to sit next to all these people. I'll go to a different one instead of showing up and it's either sold out or you you get stuck. Maybe you can't sit with whoever you went with or whatever. It's I, I can't fathom that there are people who want to to go back to just showing up and hoping you can sit where you want to. In a worse love... seat. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just saying in, in a worse seat, too. Yeah, that's what, that's what I feel about Southwest Airlines. I feel the same way, though. There's no way we should be 
a you know, an apocalypse zombie vibe for seats, bro. I guess no, there's no way. Let me get to my gate, relax, know that I'm gonna sit where I'm supposed to sit. It, the the whole free for all shit, I've never been a fan of because people and people are stupid in general, in my opinion. But when you get people in groups in herds, they get exponentially more stupid. And so I it just it's a it's a recipe for disaster. And yeah, you're right. The fact that people want to do that shit is is insane. Like what? I I, I love this the seating chart. That way, I, I I got a big family. We come. I got five seats, six seats, seven seats, whatever the case may be. Four here, three behind, two here, two. Like, I know where we at. You know what I'm saying? Especially with my babies, y'all need to know what's going on. Nah, she's insane. Yeah, it's I I couldn't believe it. I don't yeah. know that I, I don't go to movies all that often as it is, but I would go way less if it was still the way it was in 2009. How are movies doing? I think they're coming back. I mean, now I know some check people. Let me check the stats. Some people don't like this. I love this. I go to the movie theater now. They'll serve you a full dinner. Yeah, I think it's great. I've never been to one of those. There's one, uh, it's, it's block 37. It's like that little fake mall oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in like the loop. It's, uh, it's good. It's nice. With the recliner, with the recliners and the, yeah. and the meals yep. and the drinks. Does it, and shit. does it Absolutely. fuck up your experience? Cause there's waiters walking by. They don't, no. they don't really come after the movie starts. Oh, seriously? There are no, some. No, they can't. You can there, press a button in some of them and they'll come. Yeah. So there I mean? are some where they'll come. It's like a nurse coming. call at the hospital. Yeah. But at yeah, this bro, one, that's... I think they mostly bring your food out once and that's it. Okay. Um, it's expensive as hell, but right. it's, it's, it, I like it. I think they had to like adapt because if I could just sit on my couch and watch a movie that comes out, I'll do that. But the movie going experience is still really dope. Well, I think the first couple I, years after the pandemic, it was like movies were doing straight to streaming and then it was like streaming and in the movie theater. And now it's just back to like, okay, we're we're putting out mo movies back yeah. normal again. I like so, going every uh, every once in a while. But I also feel like something with that, with like serving the movie or serving the dinner during the movie, like I'm not usually looking to have a full dinner during a movie. Oh, I am. I'm usually looking to have candy if, and popcorn. Bro, they'll bring you, I have both. I have popcorn <laughs> and then they'll bring you wings. Like it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay, so... That's theater chains have closed dozens of theaters in recent years and uh, as of last year... This was written in April. Ticket sales were one third lower than 2019. Yeah. And they still persist. Um, but they're still struggling to recover from the the pre-pandemic levels in, in 2024. I think I think now that like you just have to have like blockbusters again. Like I think top I think we talked about that. Top Gun 2 was like the first movie since the pandemic where people were like, I gotta go see this in a the theater. Yeah, Twisters. Like Twisters, like I think, was way better in a theater Dune, than it would have been at home. Dune 1 and Dune 2, I think those were, I know you're not a Dune guy, but yeah. like those were theater movies. Like Barbenheimer. Yeah, yeah. Barbenheimer did a big Oppenheimer thing. Oppenheimer and IMAX was awesome. Yeah, like I think, I think there are movies now that are geared to bring back the movie going experience. Yeah, and I'm not one of those that I'm like, you know, I think it's incredible or anything like that, but if it's the one, if it's got recliners and you know, food, like, it's fun. I like going to movies. I do get scared. Movies are the one, movie theaters are the one place I get really freaked out I'm going to be in a shooting event. Bring a oh, gun, yeah, bring me a too. Gun I, I, bring a, I, get, I, bring a, I bring a burner every I get, time I go to the movies. I got, I got my piece with me. I don't. For That's sure. how you prevent that. <laughs> I. I be, you're you're right because I. I like, get dog, really <laughs> nervous at a movie theater. Bro, dude, I'm I'm the exact same way. I see people like, especially because the waiters, right? They be coming in and out, and then you'll see people like standing at the at the steps, and I'm yeah. I'm looking at the movie, and I'm, I'm looking like, back, and I'm like, oh, sit me. your ass down, yeah. bro. What are you doing over there? And so when I don't, if I like, if I fuck around, forget my my gun when I go I to the movie. I'm a I'm nervous, dog. I, I didn't know nervous. you ever carried. Yeah, only, only to the movie. Theater. Only when I go to the movies. <laughs> that's no, and so I mean that, that's reasonable. Else do I have a gun. No, it is. Yeah, nowhere else do I bring one. And it's so funny because every time I do, I go to movie theaters and there's a sign that says firearms not permitted. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> How's the I, other person? Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like fire with fire. Like I'm good in big crowds. I'm good. I'm good. At whatever. Movie theaters are the. I feel the most vulnerable as a person. I 
like get really bad anxiety i saw the hunger games movie in the fall and i was with our friend and coworker gia and there was someone who was freaking me out so bad i had to get up and walk out and go to the bathroom quote unquote and i checked to make sure that there was a security guard outside the theater like i was i was really outside the theater what's he gonna do like okay the door was right here he was next to the door and by the time you hear pop 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 i guess you're right thanks i will you, well, I you have it. you have but one second the person if the, something bad happens the person that i was worried about kept going in and out of the theater and he was yeah. charging his phone oh. he was charging his phone Th that the shouldn't theater. be allowed that shouldn't be allowed and he would walk in walk out put it in his he kept putting his hood up i was nervous about the hood being up I couldn't see his face and I truly could not enjoy about a third of the ballad of songbirds and snakes because I truly had full body anxiety that I was about to get shot. Yeah. You, you should get one bathroom break. And if you get up for a second time, you have to, you're gone. No, this dude was up 15. <laughs> just, this guy was up and up and down 15 times and, ch and then charging his phone and check, kept checking his phone. And then he would turn the flashlight on and do the flashlight towards the crowd. Like, well, he I should was, get kicked out no. just for being I, an asshole. But like, do you see where my, my fears? Yeah. Lie? Yeah. But that, that wasn't even irrational. That was very, I was really nervous. And then also what are you doing, bro? we were, I was at a movie theater it was right when I moved to Chicago. I like didn't know where things were quite yet. I was in a movie theater like on Michigan Avenue, like for whatever reason. I oh, was that's a is it the AMC? Yeah, don't go to that one. It's, that's a bad. It's that's a bad, a bad one. AMC. Don't go there. And so I was also like, this is kind of a weird area for me to be in, like to go see a movie. I went to that one one time too, and and I walked. And in. you have to go up. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, this this place strikes me as a little shady. And then I found out, yeah, you you're not supposed to go there so now i know so don't go to that one but yeah that was really bad but i get really really bad anxiety in the movies which is sad because i like going to the movie theaters but i always fear that it's gonna be me next sometimes it's you or it's you or that person and you've got there's only one way to yeah well maybe i gotta start going to the movie theaters with ari and i feel protected i, I bring the peace i just gotta go i come with my, i go with my babies i'll be damned if that's how we go out that's what you should do I'll be telling them too. I'll be like, listen, if something pop off, this is the course of action. They know. Like if somebody was to break into my house, they know where to go. I got a safe room. You know what I'm saying? Where you can close it and it's like it's like hidden. Uh, for whatever reason, like I'm very protected. No, not for whatever reason. Well, very good reason. I'm very protected. <laughs> um, and I never used to be like that until I had kids. Well, yeah. I, I used to go to the movies. And I don't know, who cares? But like when you when you have kids, you just start thinking differently. Everybody's a suspect, and that's um. That's scary, but it is what it is. Like if you know the U.S. laws allow me to protect myself, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I, I don't, I don't advocate. I don't even like guns. Honestly, I hate guns. I don't ever shoot. The only time I shoot was did I tell y'all recently? I took all my kids to go shooting. No, no. They know how. They know how at least. So yeah, all my kids know how to load a weapon, uh, cock it, shoot it. Uh, the precision is, you know, we working on the precision, but uh, even my, my youngest, my, my six year old, she knows how to, she knows how to load a little 22, shoot the 22. Oh my God. Um, yeah. She knows That's how good. To you teach your kids yeah. gun safety and how to use it and then they don't. 100%. And yeah. so we, you know, we went through like about 30, 40 minutes of like, this is how to handle it. This do not play about this shit. Do not, these are toys. Don't, 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 don't mess around. Like they, they know like, cause I'm a very easy going father. Um, but they know when I'm serious, like, it's time to get serious. And they all like stood at attention and was listening to pay attention. And they do, they do, they do a great job. Um, but it was, I mean, it warms my heart knowing that they know how to protect themselves, you know, in, in the case of an emergency. Right. And I think introducing to them at young. And like I said, I'm not a gun dude. My mom hates that I introduced them to guns, but um, my mom is scary as shit. She don't like guns. Like we try to take her to the gun range. She cries every time. Oh, I've never shot a gun. Yeah, I, I don't like I said I don't I don't flash my guns. I'm not like, gonna I'm not gonna open carry. Don't like the only, only time I do is when I feel I feel unsafe at a movie theater. It just is what it is. But like I'm not out in public with it. I don't go to the grocery store with it. It's not it's not that kind of party. But my kids will know how to handle weapons, especially my daughters, because I ain't gonna be there all the time. And they will all have pieces and they all know how to operate that thing. So you will get clapped if you run up run up on them the wrong way is texas you can you concealed carry without a permit yeah you don't need shit. That's the way you don't it need a be. permit it's the way it should nah, be nah bro you this is how crazy it is 
Well, we, like we drove from, like I said, we remember we went to Orlando, right? So we drove from Houston to Orlando and we we all stayed in an RV. Like I said, I, I don't ever carry a gun, but like when I do shit like that, I'm going to have something on me. Um, and the RV place is an hour north from where I stay. And so we all packed up, we all left. And as soon as we get there, I'm like, I fucking forgot my gun. I cannot believe I forgot my gun. And I just didn't feel safe like going to this trip without a gun. And so I was like, all right, hold up. Got the RV, typed in gun store around me. And it was one like 0.7 miles away. Went to the gun store. I said, I'll be right back. 15 minutes in and out, got a gun. Oh my God. Yeah. Now, like I said, I'm not a super fan of that, but if the law is available available to me, I'm gonna use them. So you have multiple now? <laughs> I have two. I have two guns, <laughs> both uh, 40 caliber. I got a Glock and I got a Smith and Wesson. Nice. The Glock. The Glock is a lot smoother to me than the Smith and Wesson, but that's neither here nor there. God didn't um, create everyone equal, but Smith and Wesson did. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever shot a Glock? I feel like Glocks are smoother, man. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of a Glock over Smith and Wesson. But um, anyway, the little the little Asian lady who was running my because they do a background check, right? Right. Um, they just I think they just run to see if you got any like priors or you, you warrants or something like that. It's very good. She goes, uh, she goes, ah, you stay out of trouble, huh? It's like I guess, man. <laughs> <laughs> that means that that that's an interest. I would have liked to have talked to her because that means most of the people that go in there, she's got a, they're in trouble. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. And then there's a dude. He like. <laughs> <laughs> he starts to talk to me about because we just sit. I just have to sit there while she runs the background. Like I said, it's like 10, 15 minutes. We're just sitting there. He just starts like kind of going off, and he goes like, "Goddamn Democrats, man, trying to take away all our all our rights and all our guns." And like, bro, what do you want? You want <laughs> to me alone? Me <laughs> At a, I wish I would have been now, there for that. Now, mind you, this man is literally sitting there with a gun on his hip. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> In a gun store, and I'm supposed to argue about gun laws, man. I tell you what, he I'm should like, come to Illinois. They're they're taking your rights away. I can promise you that. <laughs> it's just funny because, like, in any normal circumstance, I would absolutely argue with him. But I was like, you got it, dog. Yeah. So to like, show you the that. difference, in Illinois, you have to apply for a firearm owner's ID to even be able to buy one. That takes a month to get. Then, if you want to conceal carry, you have to get a concealed carry permit separate from that. You've got it, which that's not as egregious as the firearm ID, but, uh, and so, you know, if you want to conceal carry your gun, it's going to take you two months. You're talking to a left-leaning person. I think that's rational. Me being able to walk into a store and get a gun 10 minutes later is fucking insane. It's your dog. constitutional right. That's fucking insane. They ran a background a check on you. Kind of. What do you mean kind like, of? Sure, they, they, ran, they, ran, they ran my name through government, but like, there's no psychological exam. I don't have to go through any tests. I, 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 I could be the worst shooter on earth, and they don't know. That's not normal. This is not, this is not, America is not normal in that sense. Like, it's why, it's why, it's, guns are you, you, a uniquely American problem. Like, if you look around the world, the gun deaths in Canada, gun deaths in Europe, they're low because people are like, yo, when we see a shooting, the issue is the guns. It's not the, it's not the people are crazy. It's, people are going to be crazy, but you give crazy people guns. Hello. You Thousands could, of guns. Oh, okay. Year. You could almost talk me into, if you said there are going to be no guns in the country, period, end of discussion. You could almost talk me into that. But but that's, n that's not going to happen. So it sounds like you agree you need to have one to protect yourself. I do. But like if, let's say... Let's say we go through a radical change in the government and they're like, yo, we need to give all of, give it a roundup and have like a gun like they did in Australia. They did that. But you right? know, that's just not possible. Well, what's what I'm saying? I think that would be rational, but people, right lending people would say, no, this is exactly how it happens. The government's going to create tyranny on you. Like they, all those dumbass arguments, in my opinion, like. It makes it makes sense for us to have a disarmed society because if the government wants to do something to you, bro, they go do it. You ain't gonna do shit about it. We with you and your AR, with you and your Glock, with you and your Smith and Wesson. You not stopping Uncle Sam from doing whatever the fuck he want to do. They have drones. They have nukes. They have tanks. They have whatever they want. If they want to commit a tyranny, they're gonna commit a tyranny. Here's what it is. 
but we could just never like there's no nothing we could do to get the guns back even if you wanted to i don't think we need them but i understand no 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 no. i'm saying the government if the government was like we're doing a buyback program like you could never get we have 330 million people how many guns 500 million yeah, there's more guns than there are people. Yeah, the 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 cats out of the bag. You, you herding cats is impossible, and that's what it would be doing with the guns, which is why people on the left advocate for stricter gun laws as far as like background checks, like some kind of you know psychological examination and stuff like that to at least minimize, try to minimize the damage. But you're thousand percent right. It is what it is. Which is why I have a gun. On that's the only reason why I have a gun. If I lived in a in a place where Guns were illegal and there were no guns. I would never, I would never own a gun. Couldn't care less. I don't care about guns because I could fight. And I know jujitsu. But the places but, in America with the strictest gun laws, like Chicago, have the worst gun violence. Yeah, but that's not because of the gun laws. It's because people sneak guns over the border with lack gun laws with bordering states. That's always the case. Sure, but it doesn't, it, they don't do anything except stop honest people who want to have one. No, I, I I would disagree. Um, the the gun the gun problems in Chicago aren't like mass shootings. The gun problems in Chicago are inner city neighborhoods where there's gang violence. Like there's, they, they, that those kind of gun problems to me are a separate issue. They are an issue and they are a gun issue, but they're a separate issue. I don't think you can compartmentalize all gun issues as the same. Like gang violence is 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 a very unique and detailed uh problem in our society which i i acknowledge and i understand but i don't think those kind of issues are the same as those kind of gun issues are not they will be categorized in the same because because it's deaths and murder and you know gun violence they'll be categorized the same issue as like a school shooting a mall shooting a stuff like that but i think they're entirely they're two separate issues um that have different solutions in my opinion uh but Guns in general, I'm not a super fan of, but I'm I am a fan of protecting your family. So, like like I, I said, agree. there's there's a few there's a few issues like conservatives and myself agree. Like I'm not I'm not finna like I know some conservatives hear me talk, especially with the gun laws and stuff like that. They'll be like, oh, this fucking blah blah blah. I I understand your want and your need for them. I I get that. Like abortion again, I understand your logic behind why you're thinking that's wrong. I get that. I understand that. Uh, we'll never come to an agreement, and I think that it's just one of those things. But it, th- that to me is it's rational. Um, you protecting yourself because there's so many guns in America. That's rational. That makes sense. Um, but like you said, cats out the bag is what it is. That's why I'm just I take care of me and mine, and fuck it. We all gonna burn. Rush got on your list, dog. Um, there's a, there's an interesting oh, story. Oh, real quick. PFT's frother came. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you used it? I have used it. I frothed my coffee this morning. And? I might be a frother now. <laughs> I told you. I told you. Wait, so how did you do yeah. it? What yeah. did you, what was your froth? What'd you froth? Caught my coffee. Yeah, I froth, but did I froth you, my coffee. You put Wait. your creamer in and then froth it together? Well, yeah, I just mixed it, but yeah. And okay. I, I, so this is I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna level you up real quick now yeah. that you're in on okay. the frother game. Yeah. Mackenzie knows what I'm about to do. So <laughs> you're gonna do you're gonna take your creamer. So have your coffee, okay. <laughs> ca- have your black coffee in a cup, and then put your creamer in like a- another cup. You're gonna froth the creamer separately, and it's gonna make a foam. It's gonna be like cold foam. So mm-hmm. then you dump the creamer the frothed creamer on top of the coffee then you've got like a a starbucks cold foam yeah. action then it's gonna slowly trickle into the coffee it's a good time i'm not sure it makes much of a difference taste wise but in terms of fun we're having Pres- presentation yeah yeah, yeah we're yeah. having more fun <laughs> I got no you. it is it's definitely okay. really good because yeah. it's basically like putting wing whip cream yeah yeah, Especially yeah, yeah. if you have a flavored mm. creamer. Yeah. So also I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a creamer recommendation now that we're all on this t- journey together. Chobani coffee creamer, Arian. Yeah. Me, okay. oh my, that stuff will make your day. Chobani. Chobani, like the yo the Greek yogurt company. Nope. 
Is it C-H or S-H? C-H-O-B-A-N-I. No free ads. Bonnie Creamer. No Their ads. coffee okay. creamer is so good. I get the sweet cream. It's purple. But they have like cookie dough flavor. Like I think they have like van French vanilla. They have caramel macchiato. They have like a ton of different fun flavors. That. I'm in. That'll be good. Also, I'm it's in. a good I'm, I'm it's trying. a good froth. Yep. Yeah. That, so yeah, I appreciate that. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the Chobani joint, but mm -hmm. fr frothing for sure was way funner than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> yeah, it makes you feel so like fun. it makes you feel like it makes you feel like a kid again. Yeah. For, for sure. Yeah. 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 And also, I feel like like when you mix in coffee, usually I just get like. Like when I, I don't know, you know, those sticks that come with yeah. like uh barbecue stuff. I usually just do that, right? And I just mm -hmm. mix it in. Or like a knife or like a butter knife or something like that. That shit feels very primitive when you have a frother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I, I was I frothed this morning, I was like, this feels so much more sophisticated. Like you're, um, you're a coffee you're your guy. barista. Yeah. yeah, I'm a I'm a coffee you're guy. Oh, I got a new coffee machine too. Oh, what'd you get? Oh. Remember, yeah, I remember I had that dinosaur drip machine my mom bought. Mm -hmm. I got a what is this shit called? A Terra Terra Coffee. Terra Coffee. Terra Terra Coffee. Um oh, I don't know. Machine? That shit was like thirteen hundred dollars. Oh, it's that's American? Uh, I, I'm looking yeah, at American it now, dollars. It yeah. It's 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 a little extravagant. Bro, it makes it makes lattes. It makes Oh my god, uh, I love that. All, Jesus. It, everything, bro. Like I could I could literally let's see. Holy shit, Arian. <laughs> Yeah, I want to yeah, be yeah. rich. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Look, 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 look. It makes ter yeah, Terra Coffee. So, like, it makes what can I brew, bro? It I, looks I like can a do it from my phone. It has yeah. an app. No, I could, yeah, I could brew it from So, right oh, now, PFT if I, would I could, hate I could, that. Another app. I could, I could put a coffee under there. It's telling me to empty my waste bin right now, but I could put a coffee on there and I could. I could brew it right now. I could make a latte. I could make um, oh, right, I want it. A, an espresso. I could make. All kind of different shit, and, it, and it, you can say how much how much shots of espresso you want, how much coffee, how much drip coffee, regular coffee. It, it's it's fucking unreal. You went zero and then to adult, a hundred so quick, so quick, <laughs> so quick. Two a weeks. Real dope part is this, dog. Look, it tells me. Look, it tells me how many drinks I've brewed, and how much money I've saved because oops, and how much money I saved because of it. So I've saved forty seven dollars brewing with this shit. Wow. Well, you spent thirteen hundred right. on it. <laughs> So you're it's you're down twelve fifty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, gonna, it's gonna pay for itself in the long run. Though. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Just keep yeah. making coffees. Is it better coffee? Um, like, do you can you tell the difference? Like, not with the coffee with the drip coffee. I can't. I, maybe in my palate is not experienced enough. Yeah. I can't really tell the difference between the drip coffee, but it like the lattes, mm -hmm. espressos. Yeah, you're shit like that. You're, I mean, I'm you're like, dipping in a whole new like atmosphere of coffee yeah it's it's like coffee world and this, um this is this is your remote it's kind yeah. of crazy that aaron's like i hate coffee and like he just like has the most simple coffee and loves it and now you like all of the coffees right like i'm not really sure yes. what we weren't liking prior to this journey just wasn't uh, having it. a bunch but like you know big t said the other day he's like i'm not sure there's a thing that you said you didn't like that you ended up liking but well, that's the telltale sign of an open mind, my brother. It's true, bro. My mind's open. I'm open. I'm an open. I'm an open individual. I'll try most anything, dog. And you'll like most. it, probably. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. I like what I like. I don't like what I don't like. But I'm that's an open minded point. individual, and um, there's things I'm accustomed to that I'll be like, I ain't doing that shit, but I'll try it. So, how many so. cups are you drinking a day? I I don't, I don't I sparingly use it because all coffee drinkers that are seasoned have all warned me like listen do it sparingly when you need it when you're feeling like it if you do it every day you're gonna end up dependent on it and you're gonna end up like with the coffee headache and and, and you yeah. don't feel right unless unless you have your coffee and so i i heed that advice um i don't even do it every time i pod i did it today because i was just i spent i was up at Three in the morning watching documentaries on Jack the Ripper, trying to get more information. <laughs> Love that um, dedication. And so, and so I needed a little. Uh, well, at first I was going to like, let me get a baseline story. You know, understand it. It just started to be interesting to me too. I was like, okay, let's look at the suspects. Let's try to figure this thing out. <laughs> so that's it. Got it. Got to that point. Let's solve it. Um, yeah, I was trying to solve it pos posthumously. Is that a good I segue into it? it? Yeah, I guess we can. You know, I want to talk some Jack the Ripper. All right. On to Jack the Ripper. Initially, 
when I was looking up or did we thought it we thought about this. I was like, ah, it's gonna be another, you know, little murder mystery type. Um, but this is kind of unique. And the reason why it's unique is because I believe it's like one of the first, I guess, cases of like murder mysteries that have captivated a nation and really globally. Cause I think even towards the end, as the police are kind of releasing information, trying to get help from it, how many can get help from the public to try to find out what was going on. Uh, the New York Times actually came out with an article and called the police department uh, kind of inept. So they, they 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 don't know what they're doing. They, they fumble in the bag. Um, so let me set the stage a little bit. Uh, Jack the Ripper is a little spoiler. We don't know who he is. We don't know who did these murders, but we know that there are some telltale signs that it was an active serial killer that was going around terrorizing the town of East London. So let me take you back to 1888 in East London. Um, I guess the first encounter, right, was April 3rd, 1888. Uh, this is kind of like the t- the timeline of Whitechapel uh, and the murders. April 3rd, 1888, Emma Smith is attacked by a gang. April 4th, 1888, uh, she dies of her injuries. Um, August 7th, the body of Martha Tabern is found in, 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 in George Yard. August 31st, the, bl- the body of Mary Nichols, and it's generally, this is like the first one that's really attributed. There's five main names that are attributed to Jack the Ripper and the rest are kind of circumstantial at best, but have a lot of the same um, instances that we can conclude that it may be have experts in this case. And there are ripperologists out there uh, believe that he has probably around 11 bodies in total. Um, but the uh, putting up August numbers. 30... Huh? I just said putting up numbers. Yeah, he's doing his thing for sure. He's definitely doing his thing. Um, 1888, August 31st, the body of Mary Nichols is found in Bucks Row. September 8th, Annie Chapman is murdered in the backyard of number 29 in Hansbury Street. September 30th, this is the night of what they call the double event. Uh, when the body of Elizabeth Stride is found in uh, Dutsfield Yard. Uh, off Burner Street at 1 a.m. And 45 minutes later, the body of Catherine Eddowes is found in Mitri Square in the city of London. November 9th, 1888, the body of Mary Kelly is found in her room at 13 Millers Court, Dorset Street. Um, July 17th, 1889, the body of Alice McKenzie is found, Castle Alley off Whitechapel High Street, February 13th. 1891, the body of Francis Coles is found beneath the railway arch between Shallow Gardens and Ormond Street. Now, the, the, the there's only five of them that kind of set the stage and the rest are like, we don't know if they're attributed, but experts and uh, authorities at the time believed that the names that are most prevalent with his work was Mary Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine uh, Eddowes, and Mary Kelly. Now, um, what makes them, I think what makes this case so intriguing, like I said, it was one of the first ones that captivated a nation with uh, newspapers and and why the lore of it continues to um, ripple through our culture is because I think it was one of the first cases where, and this was a highly contentious decision, but there were some letters that were alleged to be sent by Jack the Ripper, um, and it they were sent to the police station, and the police ended up giving them to a, a news outlet, and that news outlet put it out, and that to me created the lore of Jack the Ripper, and subsequently you had a whole bunch of other letters faking people. This is how I know people have always been people, and if Twitter was live back then, there'd have been a whole bunch of jokes lying about it, is because. When they sent uh, those letters out through the publications, 
they got a whole bunch of dummy letters. They got a whole bunch of just an influx of a whole bunch of letters saying, I'm the one that's doing it, sign Jack the Ripper, Jack, Jack the Ripper, all of that stuff. And so they just got over, overwhelmed. And so they don't really think that might have been the best idea. And, and, and I think this is what created the lore. Um, so the reason why this is so famous is because it's the way in which the women were killed. They were all prostitutes. So he had a thing for targeting prostitutes. Um, and back then, work was scarce. Um, and in this certain section, uh, this low-income section, they had like low-income housing um, in this area. And there were a lot of prostitutes walking around. I want to say a lot. There was relatively a lot of prostitutes walking around. And so the first one, Mary Nichols. Okay. Mary Nichols was really the first one. And so at 3.30 a.m. on August 31st, 1888, Charlie Cross left his home in Do Doveton Street, Bethel Green, and set off. And this is also important, too, is to understand in East London, the map set out. And, like, right now you can go on, like, Jack the Ripper tours if you was to go visit London. And there's an importance to where everything happened because it's very proximal. Right? They're all within, like, and a mile. Yeah, they're all within a mile of each other. Um, and so the the story of each one and, and the reason as to why, like I said, this is so such a big case that reverberates through our culture is because they were mauled in a way that was, you know, not normal to, to murders. Uh, they were stabbed. I think the first victim was stabbed uh, uh, over 40 times, the first one that they found. And then, and then this one, was I'll get, I'll get into why but the most of them were really mangled and stabbed in a very gruesome way like a lot like the last body we'll talk about the last body all right so charles cross left his home uh, uh he headed along brady street he turns into bucks row and commenced walking along its right side as he approached uh a broad school which uh dominated the western end of its sections bucks row he noticed a dark bundle laying in the gateway on the opposite side of the street um and so at first he wasn't sure what it was. It looked something like a like a discarded uh tarpaulin. That's what he that's what he thought uh initially. But he, he as he walked closer, he realized that it was a, a body who was either dead or drunk, and he stopped in his tracks. And as he stood, um of unsure what to do, he hears from the next direction somebody else coming up to him. And so he goes to the other guy, says, Hey man, come over here and look over here. Uh, there's a woman lying here, and they both looked over there, and there was and and the and one dude uh, said, "I think she's dead." Uh, and I'm sorry, uh, Charles Cross said, "I think she's dead." Uh, dead, and and the other dude named Robert Paul uh, placed his hand on the woman's chest, and he said, "I think she's still breathing, but very little if she is." And so Paul said, "I think we should shut her up," and Cross was like, uh, "I'm not touching her." Um, and so. Back then, there was no like 911. They'd have phones, right? This is what's crazy to me about this whole thing. It's like they used to have police, policemen on patrol. Like they <laughs> late night policemen used to walk the streets, which is wild. And so they're early in the morning, mind you. This is um like 3 30 in the morning, like almost almost four. They're they're walking to work, right? They're walking to their work. And they both decide, okay, look, if you run into a policeman tell them what's happened. And if I run into a policeman, I'll tell them what's happening. Um, and so that's what they decided to do. Um, they, they started walking to their prospective jobs. Uh, and after, after one of them ran into a policeman, they, uh, they informed the policeman what happened. The policeman come, they review the body. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, I think her throat was just slit. And this comes into play later on. Um, but I think her throat was just slit. Yes. Um, and so the next victim, and chime in here if you had anything else to add, uh, Big T, but the next victim was Annie Chaplin. Um, Annie Chaplin was uh, another prostitute. Like I said, and all these have like, 
different like backstories that we can get into like the, the depth of it or whatever but it gets it gets, it gets really deep because like the lore behind it and then like sleuths afterwards have been on the case and there's all kinds of suspects and so i'm just going to try to go as brief i went into detail on the first murder because it comes into play a little bit uh afterwards um annie chaplin um the last time that she was seen um uh she was saw on annie in dorset street um she was last last person that saw her said she she was uh too too ill to do anything she was standing still in the same place when amelia passed her again um uh any Annie chapman's last moments were spent in, in i guess in pain um she met her friend amelia that's who i just referred to amelia on dorset street the bruising her right temple was evident she said how'd you get that um amelia bumped into Annie again the next day in spidia fields church and commented on how pale she looked and Annie told her uh, she felt no better and that she might admit herself to the to the casual ward for a few days. Shortly before 5 a.m. on September 8th, son of a resident on 29 Hanbury Street, John Richard entered the backyard of the property to check the padlock cellar in the yard, uh, see if it was still intact, um, and to trim a loose piece of leather from his boot. Richardson verified the cellar was still padlocked, then sat on the steps, um, uh, noting that nothing... Nothing. He didn't see anything uh, uh, of note. And then he, he he exited the property, the front door. And then three minutes later, having not proceeded beyond any steps to the backyard, and then five fifteen a.m., a tenant from uh, twenty seven Hanbury Street named Albert Kadis, Kadosh entered the yard property to use lavatory. I later informed police that he heard a woman say "no, no" uh, before hearing the sound of something uh, falling against the fence, uh, dividing the backyards numbers twenty nine and uh, twenty seven. Uh, he didn't investigate the sounds. Uh, her body, her mutilated body, was discovered shortly after 6 a.m. by an elderly resident of 29 Hanbury Street uh, named John Davis. Davis noticed that the front door was now open while the back door was shut. Her body was lying on the ground near the doorway in the backyard with her six inches uh, from the steps property. It's exactly where uh, John Richardson was said that he was sitting on the steps. Um. So they, uh, he he alerted three men and the police, and then the police come. Uh, another woman has been murdered, and I, you know, it, it's it's making its rounds now that you know people are starting to get murdered because there was a few cases before, but they weren't sure. But these are a little bit more of the grotesque murders. Um, and, we should say, uh, by the way, he was he was cutting them up like crazy, and he was. This is, this is the second. This is the second body that they attributed. The first body, I believe, it was just her throat that got cut. Yeah, but this one he started, he like cut out her uterus and intestines yes. and stuff and like put them next to her. Uh, and I think he did that on like most of the rest of them. But that yes, was all, the. Yeah, all the rest of the victims there. It was the the body mutilation was like mutilation was something that they hadn't really seen before. And so it, they would what they would call disemboweled. He literally cut their stomachs open and like didn't take anything out, but like. I mean, I didn't take anything, but it's like, well, like leave their guts outside. And it was really like grotesque. I mean, I couldn't imagine um, seeing something like that. That's, it's crazy. Um, like if you, if, if I was to read the, the, what was it? The coroner's, the, the coroner's report. It's, it's nasty. I mean, fuck it. I'll do it. All right. Uh, Dr. George Baxter Phillips described a body as he observed that at 6.30 a.m. So this is in the corner. This is one of the dudes that saw it. He said the left arm was placed across the left breast. The legs were drawn up, the feet uh, resting on the ground, and the knees turned outwards. The face was swollen and turned to the right side. The tongue protruded uh, between the front teeth, but not beyond the lips. The tongue was evidently much swollen, and the front teeth were perfect as far as uh, first molar. Yada, yada. The body was terribly mutilated. The stiffness, the limbs were not marked, but it's evidently uh, commencing. He noticed that the throat was uh, dissevered deeply and that the incision through the skin were jagged and reached uh, right around the neck. On the wooden paling between the yard and uh, in question and the next smears of blood corresponding to where the head of the deceased lay were to be seen. And there were about 14 inches for the ground immediately above the part of the, uh, where the blood from the neck lay. Jesus, the instrument used at the throat of the abdomen was the same. It must've been a very sharp knife with a thin narrow, narrow blade and must've had it six to eight inches at, at length, probably longer. The injuries could not have been 
uh, post-mortem purposes. Um, I'm sorry, sorry. The injuries could not have been inflicted by a bayonet or a sword. They could have been done such by instrument as a medical man used for post-mortem purposes, but the ordinary surgical cases might not contain such instrument. Those used by slaughtermen well ground down might have caused them. So it's very sharp objects. Um, and later on, they allude to maybe Jack having some kind of medical knowledge um, because of how he was disemboweling them and like the the ways in which he would cut them up. It's it's uh this is disgusting. Um the next victim would be uh Elizabeth Stride. Wait, 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 uh, but so that was the this third one is September 30th, but before that, um on September 25th, there was a letter that somebody sent to the cops that was like making fun of them for not being able to find this guy. And okay. that, and it was signed Jack. Is this the, the dear boss one? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so here's, here's the letters. I have those pulled up as well. You're right. You're right. Cause I, my timeline's all fucked up, but so this is, they, they, they didn't release it then though. Did they? No, they did. They, they put it in like the newspaper. Gotcha. Okay. So they did release it. Um, all right. So here's the transcription. Um, it says dear boss. Dear boss, I keep on hearing the police have caught me, but they won't fix me just yet. I have laughed when they look uh, so clever and talk about being on the right track. The joke about, oh, I forgot about that part. There was a piece of leather that that they found with uh, blood stains on it. Um, and then, so he goes on. The joke about the leather uh, apron gave me real fits. I am down on whores and I shan't quit ripping them until I do get buckled. Grand work, the last job was. I gave the lady no time to squeal. How can they catch me now? I love my work and want to start again. You will soon hear of me with my funny little games. I saved some of the proper red stuff in a ginger beer bottle over the last job to write about, but it went thick like glue and I can't use it. Red ink is fit enough, I hope. Ha ha. I didn't know they used ha ha's back then. That was like their LOL. Yeah, that's crazy. The, is that, my, that might be the first LOL. Jack the Ripper. <laughs> Jack the Ripper. Um, the next job I do shall clip the lady's ears off and send to the police officers just for jolly, wouldn't you? Keep this letter back till I do a bit more work, then give it out straight. My knife's so nice and sharp, I want to get to work right away if I give it a chance. Good luck. Yours truly, Jack the Ripper. Which was don't the first time it was that name was used. Yeah, that was the first time. Uh, don't mind giving me the trade name. P.S. Wasn't good enough to post this before I got all the red ink off my hands. No luck just yet. They say I'm a doctor now. Ha ha. Bro, that's fucking eerie as shit. Just reading that shit. It's um like I said, it's one of the first times like that has ever like a murder mystery, probably where the the killer is that I've heard about anyway, that the killer is talking to the police. Well, so the it's other like, thing that I, I found conflicting reports on, I think most people think that wasn't the killer that wrote that. But later later on they've They've seemed to believe that might not be the killer and that might be a sick joke from a uh, a medical student, actually. Because, but but in the letter he said that he would cut the next one's ear off, which did happen, but they they had put it like in the newspaper and everything. So people, I guess, if that wasn't the killer, the killer could have seen that and done it to make it seem like that was him. It could be. I mean, By the way, Jack the Ripper, I, 10 out of 10 name. If if oh, it, if that guy really it. came up with it for himself, outstanding job. <laughs> that guy should have had a job in marketing. <laughs> he did. I mean, shit. It was his 1880s, and we still talking about the shit that he did. That's, That's got to be number one serial killer name of all time. Oh, I think the Zodiac yeah. Killer is good too. Uh, Zodiac Killer Mike Gotti. I don't know. It's just it's cl it's clean. Ironically enough. It's it works. It's to the point. Jack the Ripper. That's not bad. I love it. It's, I love it. Don't yeah. love what he did. Hate the sin. Love the sinner. I don't think we love the sinner. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you're right. You're right. I don't love. Uh, well, we love his name. Yeah, great name. Outstanding branding. <laughs> Hate the sin. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other good ones. I mean, most of, like I, I, Ted Bundy's just his name. Yeah, is that no Zodiac Killer's probably yeah yeah probably or the, the smiley one. face killer. Nah, that kind of stinks. No. Jack the Ripper's all time. 
Yeah, man, so eerie. And that's like that's what's crazy about this time is like there's no how they investigated things. Like there's no really way to know. They had, they couldn't even call the police. They were like, "Yo, I'm on my way to work. If you see one, man, holla at him. Tell him." Tell him what happened. Is it John Mulaney that was talking yes, about committing is. crimes before DNA? Yes. And he was oh, like, yeah. uh, detective, we found the, the suspect semen on the victim. And he's like, ah, gross. gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a pool of the killer's blood. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Like, I mean, in the 1800s. He's I like, people would dress up to shoot up the, the bank or something. Yeah, to yeah, go yeah. rob a bank. <laughs> I <laughs> Like, I think... And then say who it was. Be like, yeah. I'm Jack the River. Yeah. And then he'd run He's away. like, they'd shoot their name with bullets on the wall. I think for the most part, you could kind of do whatever you want. Yeah. Like, yeah. How did they solve crimes in the 1800s? Uh, it, it was like, like witness. I think people may have been a little bit more. You, have, you would have to have witnesses like a little bit more forthcoming. Yeah. You know, because it's more of like a communal atmosphere. So... Like you alert the watchman, hey man, something happened. Or, you know what I'm saying? Whereas now you just call the police. I guess I, I don't. It's it's damn near impossible to solve. Like there's not a lot of evidence that could be. And then think about how much innocent people they probably locked up because one of the most. If you ask any lawyer or people that are in courts, one of the most, uh, I guess, non, unreliable, unreliable things is witness testimony. Yeah, I was just because thinking about that. People are horrible with memory. It's why the Mandela effect is a thing. Like we just don't have very good memories or, you know, our experiences doesn't reflect reality that well. And there's probably a bunch of people that just got locked up. It's like my dog. Like I, I was chilling, bro. I was going to the pub, trying to give me a little tail, a little local tail. And all of a sudden I'm locked up for murder. Crazy times. Um, Go into London prison in the 1800s because somebody said you did something. That's, that's got to suck. Mm-hmm. And I think it's with this next one. It could be. Is it Elizabeth Stripe? I don't, I don't remember which one it is. But there's a, there, there was a victim that that somebody had screamed something. I got to figure out which one it is. It may, yeah, I think this one is it. Or it might be Catherine in Dallas. Uh, Catherine Eddowes. There was a, uh, there was a dude that was kind of across the street. And so a witness heard a... Uh, fucking, I'm going. To, I'm butchering this, but I had this whole shit. There's a witness that heard uh, a term that was used. That is the like Lebinsky or something like that. And I'm, I'm butchering that, but um, uh, and that was a term used for local Jewish people, kind of like a a slur. And so he could he could have been alluding to maybe he saw somebody who was Jewish, or it was somebody with the last name. But either way, the police decided not to add that to like any of the um like updates about the case because they didn't want to ensue like any kind of like racial tensions in the village and I mean not the village the in the town that they, that they were and so I, it's good that the police were kind of aware of that hearsay that could cause social unrest um because if it was a Jewish person that was causing these murders there was already tensions within communities like that kind of piece of information that was unverified could have set off like alarm bells and could have caused even more uh, uh, arrest than there already was. Um, so the next one was uh, Elizabeth Stride. Um, she spent the last as afternoon of her life uh, cleaning rooms in a lodging house. And lodging houses were like basically homeless shelters, weren't they? Um I think so, because there's a lot of them along along that area. It was a poor part of London, uh, to my knowledge. Um, the deputy keeper, keeper Elizabeth Tanner, paid her uh, six pence for the chores at six thirty p.m. Elizabeth was seen uh, uh, near Queen's Head Pub at the junction of Fashion Commercial Streets. By seven p.m., she had returned to the lodging house and was according fellow resident Charles Preston from what who she brought in the in the in the clothes brush dress ready to go out uh, ready to go out and she talked with the uh briefly with another lodger Catherine lane liz stride left the dodging house around 7 30. um it rained heavy that night yada 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 she was in the company of a man who was about five foot five inches tall he had a black mustache 
Sandy eyelashes was wearing a black morning suit together with a Billy Cock hat. Whatever that is. Is that like a top, like Billy Cock hat? Anybody know what that is off the top Born of the head? Billy I do not. Cool. Cock hat. You're going to need to learn this if you're getting into fashion. Oh, it's, <laughs> like, a bo- it's like a bowler hat. Oh, okay. Bowler hat. Liddy. So he was kind of dressed to the nines. I wouldn't have known the word for that either, but that is exactly what I imagined people yeah. in London wore in the 1880s. Did so. you ever watch yeah. Keith Robinson's? Never heard of that. Mm-hmm. Aaron, you know that's what I'm my talking about. Bowler hat guy. Yeah. Wait, is that a cartoon? It's a yeah, yeah, yeah. animated it's movie. Futuristic. Okay, I think I've I, time travel. I've heard of it. I've Goob. never seen it. Remember Goob? Yep, I yep. clearly <laughs> don't remember it because I've never seen it. Oh, it's a great, great. You should go watch it. You would, you would fuck with it. You think? This yeah. doesn't sound. I'll, I'll look into it anyway. Continue. All right. Uh, so he his uh. They didn't. They did not appear to, to uh, appear willing to go out. He was hugging and kissing her, and was seemed. Uh, and he seemed to be a respectable man. We got. Uh, we were rather astonished at the way uh, he was going on with the woman. Uh, the two men couldn't resist a little heart, heart hearted banter at a couple's expense, and remarked to the woman, "Watch out that uh, that's leather apron uh, getting around you." And so they kind of joked about the whole thing to her, uh, the people that saw her last, which is kind of. Kind of wild. That's what they call. That's what they were calling him before Jack the Ripper, right? Was leather apron. Yeah, leather apron. Um, around eleven forty-five, William Marshall, a laborer who lived uh, at number sixty-four Burner Street, was standing outside his lodgings when he noticed a man and a woman outside number sixty-three. They both seemed quite sober, and he watched uh, them begin to kiss. He heard the man remark to the woman, uh, "You would say anything but your prayers." Oh, hey, that's kind of a line right there. <laughs> if you're talking like dirty. You know, it seemed like a little foreplay talk. Hey, you you gonna say anything with your prayers? That's kind of I'm fucking with that. You like that? That's kind of nice, though, <laughs> girl. You gonna say anything? I'm with telling your prayers, you, dude. Huh? This guy Ooh! had this guy had bars. He had good like <laughs> he could he could have been he should have been Jack the Rapper. He he, <laughs> he should have been been doing hip hop. Do you think Chance the Rapper took any any like inspiration from Jack the Ripper? Like kind of close. I don't know. It's a good question. Chance I never the rapper. considered that. Chance the Rapper, Jack the Ripper. I also haven't considered anything about Chance the Rapper since 2015 because mm-hmm. he fell off incredibly hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the evidence seems to suggest that the police traced a second man uh, and eliminated him as a suspect. Um, uh, her body was discovered at 1 a.m. Uh, a short sighting of her would mean that Elizabeth Strider was murdered around 12 uh 45 and 1 a.m uh two violent attacks have taken place on the same woman in the same gateway in the space of those 15 minutes is too much of a coincidence there's a high probability that the man that israel schwartz saw oh i, I didn't let talk about israel schwartz schwartz this is israel schwartz as a witness he said uh the man is about five foot five aged around 30 with dark hair fair complexion small brown mustache full face broad shoulders that appear to be slightly intoxicated um schwartz watched uh the man tried to pull the woman into the street but spun her around and threw her into a footway whereupon the woman screams three times, but not very loudly. Uh, he appears to believe that he was witnessing a domestic attack. And so he crossed the road. So he's walking down and he sees it happen. And he's like, mm, none of my business. So he crosses the street. This is the dude I was alluding to uh, in a second. And as he, as he did so, he saw a second man standing uh, lighting his pipe and Swartz passed him. The man who was attacking the woman called out apparently to the second man, the word Lipsky. This is what I was talking about, Lipsky. At uh, which point the second man began to follow Schwartz. Schwartz panicked and began to run and had managed to lose his apparent pursuer by the time he reached a nearby railway arch. The second man, Schwartz said, was about 35, around 5 feet 11. So he's a little taller, a little hub, a little scary. Uh, he had a fresh complexion, light brown hair, a brown mustache, wore a dark overcoat with the old black heartfelt hat, which probably describes 99% of the dudes walking around at that night. Um, the presence of the second man is something of a mystery. It suggested some that the killer had an accomplice. So, like I said, this is, was the uh, Lipsky thing that I was talking about, and they th- that that evidence from Schwartz's statement they didn't really let out because they didn't want to excite any kind of racial tension uh, amongst the Jewish community and the locals, um, which are the same thing. But obviously, there's uh, a communal divide. Um, who was the second man? It's, it it seems to suggest that there was a second man, and but they eliminated as a, as a suspect. Um, there was a report dated on the 19th of October 
1988 or 1888, uh, Inspector Swanson wrote that the police apparently do not suspect the second man, although we don't know why that could have been. Since the since her body was discovered at 1 a.m., sighting of her would mean Elizabeth Shriver would be murdered. Oh, I just I just I just read that part. Um, so there was a set, like I said, there was a second uh second dude, maybe. Um, and that's why that a um that's why that murder was kind of significant. Um, the last victim. I'm sorry, this is the last one. That was Elizabeth Shry. This is Catherine and Dow's. Uh, Edos. Edos. Um, this is September 30th in Mitri Square. So her last night, uh, and this is the double night, double murder night. So 45 minutes later, uh, they found, or they assumed to have found the body of Elizabeth Stride. Um, and what's crazy about this one is they have, like I said, they have police patrolmen that patrol the streets. And this particular one, there was a a policeman that is said to have just missed the incident by maybe two minutes. And they even suspect that maybe uh, the police officer walked in on it and the dude hid, which is kind of eerie. It seems like by this point, this this little part of town should have been crawling with cops. They were understaffed. That's one of the points that they say that they looked at. It was like there was the, I, there was a lot of people in this area, but they were just like understaffed. And that's one of the critiques. I think it was the New York Times actually came out with the article in the in that time in the 1880s that was like, "Yo, this police force is inept." Um, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's wild. Mitri Square, which is where her body was found, uh, situated about a half mile to the west of Burner Street. It was just inside the city of London boundary. It was then an enclosed square over which uh, towered three imposing warehouse buildings. So it was like in this like one way in, one way out uh, area. Three in uninhibited houses and a shop backed on its southwest corner. And two further houses, one of which was occupied by city policemen. So like there was a policeman that lived right there. Um, the square was bordered by Mitri Street to the west. Um, that's more about just the area. Okay, PC Watkins passed through at 1.30 a.m. Uh, this the, On the southeast corner of the beat that brought him to Mitri Square uh, every 12 to 15 minutes. So like I said, he was patrolling. And so he had his lantern uh, fixated to his belt. He was uh, later empathetic that the square had been quite uh deserted and no one could have been hiding in the square without him seeing them that's what that's what he says um she was seen with the man um allegedly so five minutes later three jewish gentlemen harry joseph joseph hyam levy and joseph laud lawandy uh left imperial club on duke street as they passed its junction and church passage noticed a man and a woman uh talking quietly together the woman had uh her back to them they, they could see her hand resting on the man's chest. Levy was immediately convinced that the couple were up to no good, announced briskly, I don't like going home by myself when I see these uh, sorts of characters about. Um, and so they kind of just detail uh, Joseph uh, Lawenden, L-A-W-E-N-D, Lawend? Lawend? I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. He was uh, less disgusted and more observant. He hadn't seen the woman's face. He was almost certain that her clothing was uh, worn by uh, Catherine and Dells, Eddowes, excuse me, uh, when it was later shown at the police station. Although the street lighting wasn't particularly good, he caught a brief glimpse of the man's face and was able to provide a police description. He had an appearance of a sailor and was aged about 30. He was about five, five foot nine inches tall, a medium build. He had a face, uh, a fair complexion. It was small, fair mustache. So he's kind of going over it. Um, her body was discovered just 15 minutes later of them passing a few steps away from where he saw the couple. Uh, there was a high prob probability that the man saw the murder, um, the murderer. So there was a big possibility that that might have been the dude. Um, PC Watkins finds the body. He strode along Mitri Street and veered right into the Mitri Square. Almost immediately, he saw it at sight and sent him reeling back. Um, she was laying on her back in a pool of blood with her clothes up over her waist, racing across. Uh, he knew where he knew uh, retired policeman George Morris was working as a night watchman. Um, he goes and gets him. Uh, the doctor examines the body. Um, he said the death uh, 
would have been instantaneous once the murderer had cut the windpipe and blood vessels significantly. He was of the opinion that the murderer possessed no great anatomic skill. In other words, he had only basic knowledge of anatomy. And when asked uh, the coroner, he would have expected the murder to be bespattered with blood. The murderer to be spattered with blood. He he, he replied, not necessarily. Um, they searched the area, uh, the, the escape route, because in this particular murder, it was enclosed in this almost one way and one way out kind of vibe. It's possible that he made uh, the escape via that. Like I said, it's unless you like see the map, it's kind of hard to understand what I'm what I'm saying. And so, like this is why this case is so fascinating because it's all about location, geographics, and and um, uh, proximity. Uh, it's probably that he made his escape via uh, the adjacent St. James Place, where there was a Metrop metropolitan fire escape station. Um, yet the firemen on duty said they didn't hear anything. Um, Neither the city police constable Richard Purse, who lived at number three Mitri Square, where his bedroom window looked across, saw saw anything. Um, so nobody saw anything, but uh he did it and he got up out of there. Um, and then the last of the murders that they really believe that is uh, of his, that and this is the fifth and final uh victim, and this is Mary Kelly. Now, this one is Crazy. Have you seen uh, the like a, the picture? Yeah, the pictures. I guess I guess you don't think of them having cameras, but they had them. I guess. Yeah, I mean they. It's probably one of like, it took like a while to take one picture and shit, right? That's and why probably, took, you know why that's why people didn't smile in pictures from like the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> it took so goddamn. No, that's true. That like you couldn't. <laughs> it took like ten minutes or something, so you mm -hmm. couldn't smile. And 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 it took forever to develop as well. So yeah. by the time you get the picture that you took, you forgot you took the shit. Um uh around 4 a.m. on the morning of November 9th, two neighbors claimed that they heard a faint cry of oh murder. The cries of murder were quite regular occurrence in the neighborhood and often meant a drunken brawl was taking place or domestic violence was occurring, yada yada yada. Uh they didn't want to get involved. So they ignore a lot of those cries. At 10.45 a.m. that morning, Mary Kelly's landlord, John McCarthy, sent his assistant, Thomas Bauer, who's also known as Indian Harry, wild, uh, to 13 Millers Court to collect her overdue rent because they was broke. Now, she was with the dude. What was his name? I'm sure it's going to come up here in a second. But she was with a guy and he had just lost his job, which is why she went back to prostituting so that they can pay their rent. They were in the low income housing uh, area and so he detested that she um would have to go and do that and they argued about it and she did it she she did it just to make ends meet um but he did he was not a fan of it um so he goes in and sees uh the the murder so he says i, I knocked on the door and couldn't couldn't make anyone to answer i looked through the window and saw a lot of blood um uh, the sight that he saw, I cannot drive from my mind. He later told a journalist, it looked more like the work of a devil than a man. I had heard great deal about the Whitechapel murders, but I declare to God that I have never expected to see such a sight as this. The whole scene is more than I can describe. I hope I may never see such a sight again. Um, this, this was by far the most, uh, gruesome of the murders. I mean, when you listen to them describe it, it's literally... She got cut up. She, I'm talking about everything. Guts. They cut her skin, peeled her skin off. There's a picture of it. If you can stomach it, it's um, it's disgusting, man. So the po post mortem re report, Dr. Thomas Bond detailed her injuries in uh, his subsequent post. Um, he says the body was laying naked in the middle of the bed, the shoulders flat, but the axis of the body inclined to the left side of the bed. The head was turned to the left cheek. The arm was close to the body. The forearm was fixed at a right angle and lying across the abdomen. The right arm was slightly abducted from the body and rested on the mattress. The elbow was bent, the forearms supine with the fingers clenched. The legs were right apart, the left thigh at the right angles to the trunk, the right forming the obtuse angle with the pubes. The whole of the surface of the abdomen and thighs was removed and the abdominal cavity emptied of its viscera. The breasts were cut off, the arms mutilated by several jagged wounds, and the face hacked beyond recognition of the features. The tissues and neck were all severed all round down to the bone. The viscera were found in various parts. 
the uterus and the kidneys with one breast under the head, the other breast by the right foot, the liver between the feet, the intensities by the right side and the spleen by the left side of the body. The flaps removed from the abdomen and the thighs were on the table. The bed clothing at the right corner was saturated with blood and on the floor beneath was a pool of blood covering about two feet square. The face was gashed in all direction, directions, the nose, cheeks, eyebrows, and ears being partly removed. The lips were blanched and cut by several incisions running obliquely down the chin. There were also numerous cuts extending irregularly across all the features. I will, Holy shit. I will give Jack the Ripper one more compliment. <laughs> Bro, I guess. L okay. Listen, you got it. Listen. You can't, you can't lead with that after that description. Listen, I, I, I understand it. I'm looking at the picture. It's crazy. But I res I don't respect it. This guy <laughs> he had to be he had to be the fastest worker to ever live. I mean, this they fa this was he had five minutes to do this. It it's wild. He, it's wild. If nothing else, efficient. You got to hand it to him. Hey, for a dude that's scared of getting uh, accused of murder. Yeah. Are you sure are uh, mighty complimentary of this yeah, this dude? That look. This is a hundred and fifty years ago. <laughs> I'm just saying you're complimenting What's the cutoff? today. How long before you could make jokes about uh, murder? Uh, JFK is funny now, so like sixty years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 60s to cut. 50, not so fun. 50, you know, there are people that remember 50. I mean, I guess 60 years ago, too. But JFK, people make funny JFK jokes now. So, like 60. It's true. What about um 9-11 jokes? Not, not funny yet. No. But, funny. I mean, people are pushing it. They're, no, I saw, I saw they're this, going I saw, for them. I saw, I saw this meme of uh, it's a little kid, and he's getting fed by his mother. And you know how people do the the airplane thing with mm -hmm. the spoon? They go boom, yeah, boom yeah, yeah. with kids. <laughs> the spoon. They got a little airplane over the spoon, and the kid has the, tw the twin towers behind him. <laughs> I mean, people it's do not do make funny. nine eleven jokes all the time. A hundred percent. Yeah, I guess it's just a subjective thing. I know people feel sorry. I think if you if you, if you have something connected to it, I don't think that shit will ever be funny. But if, if if you're not connected to it, I think after like five, ten years, people just forget it and try to make light of this. And look, Jack the Ripper, awful person, terrible, disgusting acts. But he worked quick. He, yeah, he was. He was man, he's Jack the Ripper. Is that like, um, who is it? Ted Kaczynski. So, that was like a genius or something. Yeah, he he went to like Harvard. Yeah, that's like saying like well, Ted Ted Kaczynski, smart guy. <laughs> but also the the bar for um the bar for being caught back then was really low. I mean, yeah. there just wasn't, there was no cameras. Witnesses was always drunk. There was low lighting. There was no electricity. Like, or was there electricity? I don't think there was like gas lamps and shit, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know when electricity so. enter, entered the fold, but it, it just, there were, just wasn't a lot of um, resources to, for you to collect evidence. I've always thought like people's bloodlines and lineages are, are hella under. Like if you, if your family comes from a certain place or your your namesake, the one thing I know about human beings, bro, is they be fucking, they gonna have sex, and back then cheating was so easy, so easy. There's no <laughs> location, I don't, there's no GPS, there's no homies. If you get caught, you sloppy as shit back then. So like, there's probably some kids that people had that probably wasn't theirs. There was no DNA testing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. I actually, you want me to, you want me to, uh, denigrate Jack the Ripper. Pe I would love to. People are asking. <laughs> I'd love you to. People are asking only having five bodies in this era. Was he really that prolific? This is kind of, he should have been putting up wilt numbers. Wait, I thought it was 11 <laughs> were connected to him by the end though. Well, five, that's what, that's five what, that's like what for sure, thing. but maybe five, yeah. up to 11. But yeah, even 11, 11, I mean, this guy, you could, it was impossible to get caught. You had yeah, to, it's it, if you got caught back then, like you were just you had to go in and tell them you did it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. So people are so, asking five bodies, like that's kind of you know. But I feel like the more the more bodies you stack, oof. Like the, I mean, the <laughs> or a kill, the more chances you have to get caught. Like at some point, maybe he maybe he wanted to like 
toe the line but not go i don't i don't know he got he got uh he was he was complacent he was fine with five he was like my legacy cemented yeah and but now that we look at it i think i think his legacy is tarnished i think he he didn't put up enough numbers what would have been enough numbers in your eyes 20 jesus christ that's a lot. You couldn't get caught, bro. dude. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying that's a lot. Bro. But like uh, at a certain point, you don't want to push your own luck. Oh, this sounds so bad. I, guess. I don't think he cared about pushing. I luck. guess he's killing people. He What's his luck? Did again? Jack the Ripper win enough rings? That's what people are asking. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I think um, it's possible. The answer is no. Right. <laughs> he's LeBron. <laughs> he's LeBron in terms of championships. He's LeBron in 2010. Yeah, has Out. he won the has he won the big one? Correct. Though? Can he win the big one? We don't know. He's he, like Connor McDavid. <laughs> exactly. Jesus Y'all are wild. Christ. Y'all are he has wild. a few playoff wins. Yeah, not the big one. Yeah. There was or, two more. Jack the Ripper two. can get you to the Eastern Conference Finals every year. He can do that. We know that. But has he won? Can he can he win three championships in a row? That's what we need to know. And I don't know that we ever got that answer. Well, the thing is, I there's mean, a lot of murders people. that he that are out that that we kind of attribute to him, you know. And so we we don't we don't know. It was mm -hmm. before, you know, like I said, it, it was it was it's Wilt holding up a hundred. Yeah, we don't we don't know. know That's fake that too. That he That's hit, so you know true. what I'm saying? <laughs> That's fake too. That for sure never happened. <laughs> I don't know. No, I was asking questions. Um, there were two more letters uh, uh, that came that, like I said, the, the police aren't really sure if it's a hoax. Um, but no, there's there's more than two, like two or three. One right? of them had a kidney Post with it. So postcards. Yeah. One of them got sent yeah. with the kidney. I'm not going to read yeah. all of them, but um, yeah, it's it gets it gets wild now. So. There was there was there was more murders. They're not sure that they attribute it to uh to them. Um but there was you know, subsequently after all the dust settled, like I said, there there was never any kind of suspect that stuck. It was always um I guess speculation and they didn't ever they never figured it out, man. This is why this mystery uh Persists throughout the almost a hundred over a hundred years later. Well, no, no, um, I mean, and then yeah. at this point, what do you even? How how could so you I, even do that, anything now? No, it's 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 over. It's cold cases for 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 the rest of eternity. Um, now I I have I have some theories about what happened. I think one possibility is, and I don't have any proof of this, is it was a police officer. Um. I was patrolling the streets and just a rogue police officer. That's just a gut feeling. Have no evidence for. Um, uh, the other one I have is, it's what I alluded to. This one actually makes the most sense to me. Um, like I said, there's there's evidence for and against everybody involved. Um, but the sleuths have been sleuthing <clears throat> for a long time. Uh the very first murder and the very first guy that was that reported to see the body was a guy by the name of Charlie Cross. Now, Charles Cross um, wasn't his real name. Uh, his real name was Charles Le Lechmer. Lechmer. Uh, so he originally saw the body and this is this is this is this is my theory why if you look at the map of where he lived and where he worked that route that he took to walk um within that mile <clears throat> all the murders happened within that veil except for two of them and the two that did were outside and they were a little bit south of that his mother lived in a neighborhood like within four or five blocks of all of those murders. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is that the the very first murder, <clears throat> the only thing that happened was her throat got slit. Now all the other murders, they were disemboweled. They were, they were highly cut up. And so there's a theory that says he got caught in the act. And so 
in desperation, he was like, man, look, I just found a body. And so he brought the other dude in. Um, here's some more evidence as to why he's, he's super suspect. Um, he gave a false name. So like or originally he gave it and he testified as, as Charlie Cross, excuse me. He testified as Charlie Cross and his, that wasn't, that wasn't his, uh, that wasn't his real, his real name. Uh, and this, this is what the, the, the witness who saw him, Robert Paul, um, so they, like I said, they think that maybe he was trying to cover some of his wounds. Uh, that's what, according to those who favor uh, Cross, Paul actually in, in, uh, interrupted Cross in the act of murdering Mary Nichols. And, uh, and uh, far from standing, looking at the body, Cross was trying to cover up some of the wounds of the body he, he inflicted. Um, uh, another piece of evidence is uh, that he was uh, contradicted. He had been walking along the opposite side of Buck's Row when he observed something lying in the gateway, and he had only gone as far as the middle of the road when he saw that. What was lying in the gateway, in fact, the figure of a woman, uh, said he was still standing there when Paul, when he heard Paul approaching. However, according to Robert Paul, he was actually standing where the woman was. So in other words, he may well have been that she just murdered her and he, then he stepped back. So he gave the uh, event that he was only in the middle of the road. Robert Paul said uh, he was like standing right where she was. Um. Uh, like I said, he gave he gave the police a false name. According to authors, researchers, Christopher Holmgren and Edward Stowe, his name wasn't Charles Allen Cross. Uh, it was, in fact, Charles Le Lechmer. He would only get, he, he he would have only given a false name. So the theory goes if he had something to hide that something being was uh, embarking upon a reign of terror, which over the coming weeks would uh, seem to eviscerate the bodies of five local women, yada, yada. He was local. His route to work. His 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 contradictory story with Robert Paul, um, and uh, apparently he was uh, a meat deliverer. Meat deliverer. So there are suggestions that Pickford's branch he worked for, uh, he worked at, dealt with delivery of meat, and that is kind of, you know, the butchering of the women with the meat. It's just a whole bunch of uh, evidence in in his direction. Um, that that to me that's my main suspect. Um. There was another one. I've got uh, I've got two that, go that I read about. So there's Carl Fagenbaum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was a 54 year old German merchant sailor who apparently confessed to mutilating women in some fashion. I didn't read more about what if he was convicted of you know whatever he was, uh, but he apparently went by a bunch of aliases during his lifetime and worked on a merchant in ships that had been docked near Whitechapel. Records prove he was working in Whitechapel on every single date of the five Jack the Ripper murders, and he and his co-workers often would visit the nearby brothels. Um, and then he moved to the U.S. in 1890 and was convicted of murdering a woman named Juliana Hoffman. And, uh, and then we fried his ass in the electric chair. Then <laughs> there's a guy named Walter Sickert, who uh, was a painter. And he was also German, born in Munich in 1860, immigrated with his family to London in 1869, and he was known for painting prostitutes, uh, which is kind of a weird, weird niche, but do your thing. And uh. he, it's just like, if, if you're becoming an artist, you're like, I'm going to be the prostitute guy. Well, I mean, I'll, there was no porn back then. So he was making his own porn. He could be okay. Okay. Innovative. Well, that that's also important though. Uh, so he, um... There were some apparently works of his art that people think have clues about Jack the Ripper in them, but he was also impotent after having several surgeries on his dick, uh, and that's why some people think he may have targeted uh, prostitutes. Mm. Which, why is that their fault? I mean, you should be targeting the, the logic you of should, a, you should be targeting the killer. dudes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't um, know, but uh, those were the, there were a couple others too, but those seem to have the most, uh, at least circumstantial evidence for them. Yeah, there was another dude, I can't find his name, because there's, there's so many, because this is just, it's a crapshoot, because there's no evidence, and this is the 1800s. Uh, there was another dude that was like a traveler who, um, the, only, the only thing that was against him, like he he liked to dress like really uh, elaborate, um, but he was like super into prostitutes, a misogynist. 
and uh, was around the area and would bounce. And I think he got caught with a, another crime later on, but uh, I forget his name. Did you see this book that was written in 1996? Um, it's by Richard Wallace called Jack the Ripper, Lighthearted Friend. And he <laughs> he says that Lewis Carroll, the guy who wrote Alice in Wonderland, uh, was Jack the Ripper. And his evidence is uh, that there are some passages in Lewis Carroll's works that you could like completely rearrange. These are like paragraphs. And he's like, if you take all the letters in this paragraph and rearrange it into something else. So there's one uh, from Carroll's book, The Nursery Alice. There's a passage. So we went to the cook and we got her to make a saucer full of nice oatmeal porridge. And then we called Dash into the house and we said, now Dash, you're going to have your birthday treat. We expected Dash would jump. We expected Dash would jump for joy, but it didn't one bit. He says you can move that around to say, "Oh, uh, by the way, Lewis Carroll's real name was Charles Dodgson." Um, so he says you can rearrange that to say, "Oh, we Thomas Bain Charles Dodgson coited into the slain nude body, expected to taste, devour, enjoy a nice meal of a dead whore's uterus." We made do, found it awful, wan, and tough, like a worn, dirty goat hog. We both threw it out. Dash Jack the Ripper. That that's that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, no, you could a, take a, a paragraph of anything and rearrange it into whatever you want. Yeah, because you have every is, letter there. Yeah, which is it's kind of juicy though. Like, imagine if it was true though. It's I mean, I juicy. guess you you do have the. Uh, tiny piece of evidence that he did potentially like send letters to the cops being like haha you can't catch me literally haha mm -hmm. he invented haha and so yep. like maybe if it was lewis carroll he was writing it <laughs> in alice the, in wonderland i guess is that the first that might be the first haha we need to look in, that in, up in history <laughs> the first haha i mean um, again if he did that that's another notch in his cap <laughs> the more feather in his cap notch in his belt <laughs> Yeah, hats and belts, you know. Um, there was uh, a a bunch of alleged suspects. Um, they detained eighty people searching for the uh, for the Ripper and some journalists. Some journalists dressed up as women, hoping to coax him. I wanted to talk about this because journalism is dead in this country. But let me tell you <laughs> something: in the eighteen eighties in London, those guys were were real journalists. They dressed up as prostitutes trying to get like courted by jack the ripper who was out that's there wild. killing people that's that's, that's journalism drag time story hour give those people oh, a pulitzer can i ask something though <laughs> if they if they were to have fallen into jack the ripper's hands the fuck they got to write about they're dead well i think maybe the plan was get get courted until you like maybe have a cop like nearby or something yeah. or sense danger yeah but jack the ripper eyes like, i'm not finna for no six one females out here there was you no six I mean? one englishmen in the 1800s you ain't lying yeah you know it stuck out <laughs> wait yeah, were yeah, they were they dudes that were dressing up as women well didn't All you say that they were i thought it was uh, i think it was, i think it was men and women were there female cops in the 1800s i don't think i so. doubt it right uh, or sorry, people, I meant journalist. Some people think Jack the Ripper could have been a woman, though. Wait, T, really? Yeah. Uh, ah, hang on a second. There's no way. I there's no it. way, bro. Hold Why? please. Why would a woman hate prostitutes like that? Arthur Conan Doyle, who was in his late 20s when the Ripper killings occurred, speculated at the time that the Ripper might have been female, as a woman could have pretended to be a midwife and be seen in public in bloody clothing without arousing suspicion or notice. William Stewart in 1939 in his book Jack the Ripper, A New Theory, named Mary Percy in connection with the crimes. Percy was convicted in October of 1890 of murdering her lover's wife and child and was hanged on December 23rd of 1890. All evidence given was circumstantial and there's no physical evidence or eyewitness reports linking Percy to the Ripper crimes. Well, there's no physical evidence of linking anybody. Yeah. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> nah, that's... you know, we're inclusive. Could have been a woman. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't. I don't that's think so. feminism. Yeah, that's <laughs> real feminism. Also, also, that's a feminine, uh, feminine phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would do we think it would be more likely? I'm I'm talk, I'm thinking through this as I talk it out. Do we think it'd be more likely for a man or a woman to send letters to the cops, being like, "Haha, you can't catch me." Man. You think? Uh, yeah. 
it, it to me that's that that screams ego and i don't think from, from my vantage especially back then women didn't really have a lot of rights right mm -hmm. and so they were like more stayed in their place and so we are that, talking me, about a, a serial killer though for sure right? so I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to, I'm trying to put all facets in into play here i think a woman would if a woman was killing she's not going to go tell the, she's not going to write you a letter about it because the, the to me back then women murdering there to be extreme motive right there there had to be a motive and usually when women kill people it's like very it's a passion crime there's a reason why I'm killing you um and usually so like who who was that movie the Mo monster monster was written after um there was a woman it was a prostitute who had gotten like she was like sexually abused a bunch and and so she, I think she got sexually abused Kind of could be butchering the story, but I think she got sexually abused. She caught HIV and then uh, went around. I don't know if she caught HIV, but she went around killing dudes that picked up prostitutes. Um, I'm, I might be mixing two stories, but she she, she definitely she, she went around killing prostitutes. She felt so like tired of men and, and the sexual abuse that they uh, did. So it was like that kind of passion, uh, crime of passion uh, makes a lot of sense. Because when women usually kill, it's to execute a goal. And this doesn't make any sense. Like, what goal was a woman back then murdering prostitutes? I just don't... It just doesn't make any sense to me. I also think that women back then, there weren't a ton of unmarried women, I'm assuming, back then. Or, you know, I'm just Except making... Except all the prostitutes. Well, besides that, but... No, so the, unless the, the, maybe the, they the, were married, I don't know. But like, Yeah, Miss, Miss Kelly w was with a dude. Uh, that she had to go back to prostitu prostitution right. because yeah, yeah, yeah. they 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 were they were broke and so but like, prostitution was a was a viable. I'm saying though that there weren't a ton of unmarried women. If I were a okay, if I were married and I wanted to become Jack the Ripper, a female serial killer, my husband would probably be concerned as to where I was. But I feel like, again, this is, I don't know if this is assumptions I'm making, but there were more unmarried men that wouldn't have people questioning them. Right? Yeah. I, I agree with that. Like, women couldn't this own the, property. This, this is, this to me screams incel. This screams but dude were that can't get laid. a thing? Like, could you be an incel oh, yeah. in the 1800s? There's always dudes that couldn't get females, bro. Always. They definitely didn't use it the term. Well, but right. No, but like, no, there no swag, was. no aura, and they take it out on females. Mm -hmm. It's always been a thing. Negative aura and no rings, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> L, L. McGee. Facts. <laughs> um, I feel like Ripper. Jack the Ripper might have had an aura, but like not in a good way. You, he does he kind has, of have aura. Yeah, you love this guy. I don't love him. I, I'm, I'm fascinated. Like, if you are to kill that many people, you have to have some, some sort of aura. A villainous aura. We're still talking about yeah. him. That's, that, that's a plus. You do light up when we talk about serial killers, right? <laughs> what this about Peterson? kind of your bag. As much as you don't want to be associated with serial killers, will we talk about serial killers? We've talked about what other up. serial killer have we talked about? I feel like we've talked about a lot. All, all, of the, all of the murder mysteries. Every murder mystery you like, you look at you, you're all sitting up in your I'm, seat. I'm interested in it. That's what I'm saying. You'd be lighting up around these cases. Maybe we need to explore this, man. What it, what intrigues you about murder mysteries? I don't know. I I like I like unsolved things. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could solve them? Do you like unsolved math problems? Uh depends how <laughs> hard they are to do. Riddles? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I you're do kind of like riddles. riddles a little bit. You're good at guessing populations. Oh, dude, what was it that? Why did you give him? Why'd you give him that? No, 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 no. What was it that happened yesterday? <laughs> it was, fuck. I might have to call somebody. Something happened, and I guessed a number, and it was dead on. And I was like, so, "This needs to be recorded." I forget, but it was. I I nailed it. Just. I'm sure you did. I, I did. I'm sure you did. I, yeah. I believe you. Will if anybody believes you? And Will had a hundred. He may have. We don't know. <laughs> we'll never know. Nobody happened to record that game. Big T guesses spot on. Will had a hundred. All things that may or may not have happened. Yeah, man. So in conclusion, we'll uh, unless anybody has anything else about Jack, um, 
he may be still out there, man. He yeah, may be, 150 you know, years later. maybe he has a lineage of little rippers running around causing True. carnage. Mm. Um, but we, we, we never caught him. Uh, I'll was, tell you, you do, you do still have a good chance of getting stabbed in London. So there may be. Cause they, cause they got good gun laws. Yeah. You're getting stabbed. Not <laughs> yeah, so you'll just get <laughs> eviscerated. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell if a dude walk in with a movie theater, he got a knife. I like my chances. Dude walk in a movie theater with an AK. My my, that, my, my, that, little glock, my little Glock gonna have to do. That's an interesting question. Would you rather have someone walk into a movie theater with a huge knife and you have nothing or a gun, but you also have a gun? Uh, knife. Easy. You, th you think? Yeah, bro. I, li listen, it's dark, right? It's dark. Let's say the lights are on. They, they, lights they, is on. they turn Fuck the lights it. on. The, the lights, the, 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 it just helps him. And so, if, depending on what his goal is, if his goal is to kill as many people as possible, like he might get one or two with a knife, but if everybody come together, we gonna we gonna get him, right? Um, well, yeah, you can outrun a knife. You can't with a, a with a gun, bro. That thing no that fire rapidly. You got a gun too. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna sit in a movie theater with a strap over my shoulder and a and a and a and an AR. <laughs> who said it, who said it has to be an AR? You both have this. You both have a handgun. Then it's just who can shoot better. And I, I ain't gonna lie, I can shoot. You know what I mean? Like I, I beat um my the the first time I went shooting with my stepdad, he used to be uh he used to work in law enforcement. He was the a um, forensic uh, investigator. Actually, he he investigated murder scenes. So he really? he used to yeah. So he used to go on murder scenes and take DNA samples, yada yada yada. So he had you know he had to stay strapped. And so, but you know, they have tests, you know, you have to pass certain tests. And so, uh, we went with them. I was like 19, 20 and, uh, he beat me with the revolver, but I beat him with the Glock. Nice. So I could shoot dog. Um, I don't, I, I just, I, I, I feel like knives, you know, my go-to move, I take my shirt off. Right. And, uh, and I got, I got like a, <laughs> okay. You thought I got, about like this a, before? I got a, a thousand, but I think men think about this. Do you think about I do anyway. I, I think about this shit all the time. I think about I, I, I haven't thought about situation. a knife specifically, but I've, oh, I've I found myself in places where I'm like, if something goes wrong. Yeah, I like plan my exit strategy. Oh, I got an exit strategy forever. I'm talking about a diner, a restaurant, a movie theater. I have an exit strategy. Um, but like they teach you in, in jujitsu, right? And this is why I know I could fight. Okay, there's a difference between boxing and fighting. Right. I could fight and I could box a little bit just from like growing up being around. Like, I got some hands, but I could fight. Right. And so they teach you in jujitsu. Uh, the, the, what does it say? The world is, the, the ground is your ocean and uh, the majority of people can't swim. And so if, if me, if we tussling and we find ourselves on the ground and you don't know jujitsu, I'm, I'm winning that 10 times out of 10 because I, I they teach you how to grapple on the ground. And so there's specific techniques that you learn that most people don't understand. I'm talking about the most athletic, but I got, I got tapped out by a 16 year old that weighed 145 pounds when I first started jujitsu. I was like, yo, I got to get good at this. This is crazy because you just don't know what you're doing on the ground. And so if it came down to it, I feel like I could disarm a knife. Uh, because I know certain body movements. Tell me what you were talking about. What you started to say, you take your shirt off and then do what? Yeah. So I take my shirt off and you kind of use it as a, so like with, when people stab, they don't really like, unless he's a trained marksman and he knows what he's doing, which would be weird to, you know, go in the movie there with a knife. Um, like they teach you how to control certain points in jujitsu. And, and that's part of it. Like, they teach you how to take people down that have jackets on. They teach you how to use their jackets against you. And they, they call it a gi, right? But there's there's certain techniques that you can use. And so with that, um, you you can kind of use their momentum as leverage and to and to like guide the knife away from you. Like you might take a couple, you know, if they get lucky, but for the majority part, I think I I feel like I can handle myself with a knife. And shout out to jujitsu in general, because that shit is to me the best self-defense course of action like kung fu is not very realistic uh a lot of those martial arts are very specific like judo isn't very realistic but jujitsu is boxing is um uh what's another one i think taekwondo is um 
And I'm not I'm not an expert, but from my experience, those are the most like hand to hand combat. Like you, could, those are really applicable to real life situations. So I feel like I can handle myself with a knife. All right. Well, I think that wraps on Jack the Ripper. We don't we never caught this nigga, and um, <laughs> yeah, sad for the victims, for the victims' families. But um, it makes for a great story. It's fun to to tap into. Like you say, there's like interactive maps you can go online and see to see how, like the proximity of each murder. Very fascinating, way more fascinating as you can see. I'm very emotionally invested in this shit. If you if you're interested in it, there's people who got degrees in this shit, dog. You can go deep down the dollar. Uh, deep down the rabbit hole where you can see all the list of suspects, all the evidence against them. And I just lightly, t lightly, you know, I was talking for a long time, but I just lightly went over all of the evidence that I thought was pertinent to just kind of like give a baseline of the story. You can, you can go really deep on it. Um, and it's fascinating. So, um, yeah, that concludes our Jack the Ripper episode. And anybody else got anything else, man? Shout out to PFT for the frother. <laughs> oh, oh, I meant to say you've got now quite the challenge ahead of you to find an $11 birthday gift that's that good. That, you know what? I'm going to see his receipt to make sure it's $11 because this should be more than $11. Mine, I have a frother. Mine was nine bucks on Amazon. Okay, okay. Cheap. So he might, yeah. he might be telling the truth. Right? So but you got a good one. 11. Yeah, 11. Yeah. yeah. He, oh, he thinks highly of me. Mm -hmm. Okay. The thing, the thing is, is that sometimes some liquids, now you got to do what PFT does and see what liquids are frothable and which are not. I'm just going to froth shit I like. I'm going to try to yeah. froth some Dr. Pepper today, see what that does. Uh, I think it'll make it flat. Oh, that's what he said, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get the uh -huh. get the Chobani Creamer report back. Maybe no, we'll maybe report I'll back. send, okay. maybe as your birthday gift, I'll door dash you some Chobani yeah, Creamers. Yeah, you know, it's all good, man. So by the time y'all are listening <laughs> to this, no, it'll be the 22nd. And then in two days is my birthday. Um, Are you doing anything? I, nah. So I I had this whole trip planned, and then I was sitting in my bed uh, yesterday, and I was like, I don't I don't want to go anywhere. I don't feel like traveling. And so one of my favorite birthdays I ever spent was two thousand twenty one. Was it twenty one? Could have been two two thousand twenty. Maybe two thousand twenty. Um. Yeah, it was two thousand twenty. Uh, I sat in my studio my entire the entire day, and I wrote a song. Hmm. It's called, it's called Go Up. It's on my Bohemian album. Y'all should check it out if you haven't heard it. Uh, it's called Go Up. So I wrote that whole song on my birthday. I composed the beat, wrote the lyrics, recorded the whole thing on my birthday. It took about a day. Um, I may I may do some shit like that again. It was very soul, soul cleansing, man. So um, happy birthday to me coming up. And <laughs> um, yeah, don't kill anybody. If you're out there thinking about it, yep. seek help. Especially uh, Try your hardest not to murder people. It's not kind. Nobody wins when the family feuds. Mm -hmm. Now you will Facts. get caught. Yeah. Now yeah, yeah. now you gonna... now you can't get away with murder. Yeah. If you get away with murder nowadays, you got some you got something to you. You Big see what I'm saying? You. you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Big T's your biggest fan. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just saying. It's 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 impressive if you get away with murder now. Every house got ring doors, cameras, and I'll tell you the main reason I got security cameras. Was because I don't want to be implemented in some shit that I'm not a uh, part of, and so I got security cameras for evidence of I was here. You see me, mm -hmm. and so every time there's motion in my house, you know I'm here. So, all right, man, don't murder anybody. Stay beautiful, stay classy. I'll at y'all next Tuesday. The Hobbit will be back in the studio, and uh, hope you have some great It'll stories. Be week one. Though. Isn't this week in week zero? Football season. Oh, it starts? This there there's a couple games this weekend, but next next week is real week one. We're wrapping it up. Yeah, next College, time you right? hear us, yeah. yeah, next time you hear us talk, uh, it's football season. All right. So Big T gonna be super happy. Facts. Yeah, man. Well, happy uh happy season coming up. Gonna be a good season. Um, I think I'm gonna watch some football this year. I'm excited. Love to hear that. Nice. Yeah, man. All right, y'all. See y'all next week, man. Thank you.